So nice we had to do it twice, man. Man. Hey, man, we had a good we had a good session last week. Man, we had listen. to go ahead and <laughs> bring y'all back again on this good old DFW Shed Sessions What's podcast. good, everybody? I'm your boy, Lucius, by the way, Lou Paul Beats. Got my good brother, J.L. Groove. Cheers, I. And we got the beautimous Professor Mel Will. Hey, hey, hey. So, um... I'm gonna start off like we did last week. So, uh, what y'all do uh, this weekend? Ah uh, man, um, well, work, 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 work. Yeah. Uh, work, man. Had a couple dope photo shoots. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did a uh, did a gig with my good brother Jackie Donlow. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Jackie Donlow. He uh celebrating his birthday week. So, yeah. uh, did that, man. Um, of course, I'm at this. Uh, uh, I didn't. I wasn't gigging there Sunday, but uh, every fourth Sunday I'm at this uh, bar called Nate Seafood in Addison, mm-hmm. and I'm a part of that situation every fourth Sunday. Also, shout out to uh, the good brother Matthew Kurzman. Uh, okay. I did the front yard concerts with him. Nice. This past weekend uh, with uh, my band, my uh, my family, Ten and Tonic. So yeah, mm-hmm. that was a uh, that was pretty much my okay. My setup for this weekend. Nice. Professor Mel Will, did you get into any trouble this weekend? Um, I almost got in trouble. Uh oh. Um, so I was at <laughs> I guess this is an early gig tale, right? I was mm-hmm. at this church and um my dad had to go preach. And I'm not gonna say the name of the church. Mm-hmm. But I had to do the solo before he preached. Okay. And one of the things I felt dope about, you know, um, what happened this weekend is my mom she used to play all the time Mm -hmm. at church and of course we got a musician so she didn't have to do so many things at the church so this is one of her first times just really playing and so i enjoyed singing while she was playing but there was this i guess it was a guest musician there or whatever and Mm -hmm. the thing that i cracked up about was when the choir sung you (laughs) Mm -hmm. you had the musician and you had the choir director battling as to giving that the uh the choir w- what part is getting ready to come up or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you had him yelling blah 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 to mm-hmm. the choir, and then she was like, "No, blah 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 blah." And I was like, <laughs> "Whoa, y'all just gonna two beef M- it out in front of everybody?" That's like, that two MB syndrome right there. <laughs> well, that's exactly what happened. That's it exactly was what, so that's, funny. That's what we talked about last week. Two them. Two yeah. Two and so I was just like, I was just like, all right, then I'm just going to sit on this second row and just mm-hmm. kind of laugh about it. But it was so funny. I, I don't think I've seen that in years. So it just kind of took me back. So, yeah, that was the highlight of my weekend. Okay. Well, that's nice. Well, um, <laughs> what, what what did you do? Okay. Well, so what I did, I went, uh, the company that I played for, we went to Cancun overseas and did a wedding gig. And it was a very adventurous, interesting <laughs> um, journey that happened. So, uh, so we first the flights was kind of a bit much. We had to fly from DFW to Miami, then we went from Miami to Barbados, and we actually st- stayed a day over or a night over in Barbados, and uh, which was cool. We didn't have to play the first night. You see so. Rihanna. Did you see Rihanna out there? Man. Come on now. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> 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 but uh, but we, we went to the beach and all that and hung out, went to a few bars and had some drinks and had some good fun. And then the next day, oh, so while we was in, I want to say in Barbados, we got, somebody got the text that the drummer, because it was two different sections. So, uh, so for Friday I played two nights. I played Friday and Saturday night. Friday night was with the cocktail band, which is like the jazz trio stuff. Okay. Because they wanted like uh, a little trio band for the first night, then the second night was the wedding. Okay. So I played Friday and Saturday night, Friday small band, and then the wedding was a party band. So now let me ask you this. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, technically, technically, that's two different bands, right? Uh, I guess you could say that. It's... It's Cause, like a because what because what I'm gonna ask is like so in in a in a certain type of situation wouldn't that wouldn't that equate to like two two different checks? Yeah. Oh yeah. We, okay. We don't get yeah we get paid. That's different. Okay. Got yeah. you. Got you. Yeah. So yeah. Anytime 
a cocktail or something like plan for a ceremony, we're getting paid more money. So get more money being added. Got you. Yeah. So um, something happened. Is everything good? You straight? Y'all okay? Okay. All right. Well, so <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So it's all yeah. It's all separate. You get paid anytime they ask you to do something. You gonna it's an automatic. You get it's a it's a it's already a set fee for whatever uh the ceremony or the cocktail hour is. Okay. So so that Thursday when we got in, cause it was, I think it was like five. Yeah, it was five of us that went out starting. Which is me, bass player, sax player, uh, sound engineer, and the lead, which is the like the face of that band. Uh, so it was us five, and then uh, for the second night was basically the rest of the band. Okay. So, uh, so that I want to say that th- was it that Thursday. Yeah, I think it was later that Thursday. Uh, somebody got a text talking about, uh, well, the drummer overslept. And Mrs. Flight. Wow. Mm. Wow. So, of course, it was. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah, that was a heated situation. So, they, long story short, they ended up, they got them situated to where they was able to get him a flight. And he he barely, he got there just in time, like, probably right at sound check. Really? For Saturday. So in this situation, is it like, is there a kit there provided for him and all that? Yeah, it's already kit. Okay. Yes, yeah, because they they had a keyboard provided for me mm-hmm. as well since it was overseas. Usually, uh, for the flight gigs, you usually have to. Um, I usually pack my keyboard with the sound sound guy, and the sound guy just they drive like if it's in New York, they drive into New York. Oh, okay, I got you. But overseas, they make arrangements. I got you. So. That's crazy. Yeah, so, but they... Tighten up, drummers. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten up. Man. Yeah, so, yeah, it was pretty rough. So, they they got a situation where he got there in time. So, so that was Barbados. Um, Wait, is this your first time doing overseas for, the, for this company? For this company, yes. I have been overseas before, but okay. that was some years ago. Okay. That's another story for for another day. <laughs> <laughs> we might have some time to squeeze that in. I don't know. I might that might be my gig tale. That's what I, I said. Know. Yeah. So anyway, so Wow. Um <laughs> 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 Sir. So so um somebody said who's the drum? I'm not I'm not I'm not calling no names, Doc. Come on now. <laughs> we we keeping it we keeping it clean, brother. So don't spill. We 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 just sharing the tea. We're not spilling it. <laughs> So oh, there, um, there, go, there go both the uh, hit. Well, you early, you early, <laughs> you early with the with the rah rah tonight with yeah. the rigmarole, sir. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. So this is so uh, Barbados was uh, Thursday, Friday. We had to take flight to Cancun, and we went to the airport, and they put them on like a small plane, mm-hmm. uh, and it was like no AC. Ooh. It was just one of them rough. So. Yeah. We got to Cancun, which is pretty cool. Then when we got to Cancun, they put us in these apartments, and it was rough. There was no AC in the in apartments. It was just completely hot. And uh, we had the AC. Now, the room that me and the bass player had had the AC, but it felt like it wasn't blowing <laughs> nothing. What, what location was it? I saw your uh, picture. You were on the beach. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Oh, so, okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so we at the apartments, and um, so I think this was maybe about an hour or two before we had to get to Warren Christopher. What up? Before we had to get to the hotel to to uh to get ourselves ready for a cocktail hour and set up and all that. So we get to co- we get to the hotel for cocktail hour, and uh, we you know do our set whatever, and we play like. Jazz, the we played cocktail for about four hours straight. Yeah, it was like from, no, it was, yeah, it was like from five thirty to eight thirty or something like that, or, or six to no, it was six to nine. So we did that. Then by the time we finished doing that, the lead came to us and said, "Okay, we're not playing. We're not staying at the apartment no more." They moved us to a hotel, which is 
was the hotel, the beach, just which is what y'all saw. Yeah. So basically, how that happened was, you know, we have the the group text message and musicians. You know, we we always talking our talk of when, when it comes to the. So somebody said, <laughs> "It's a roach in here as big as my foot." <laughs> 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 and then <laughs> and then uh, the the uh singer said, Well, at least you have AC. So then with that, the uh the guy that's like he's like the general manager of the company, he's yeah. like, No AC, what are you talking about? He y'all have no AC. So he you know, he's upset about that situation. So he made calls the guy that's situated and within the client and then they put us in much better situation. Oh, that's dope. So we that's got, cool. yeah, and we I'm all moving around, but that's cool. Yeah, we end up getting our own. I know, far as me, bass player, one other singers, and guitar player, they moved us in the hotel, which was on the beach, and we had our own rooms, oh, okay. which that's was pretty dope. dope. And the rooms, the rooms, were pretty dope. There was no TV in the room, but it was real nice furniture, and they had like a like it's like it was like a vintage radio mm-hmm. with a knob, but it was like. On the radio, it was still up to date because it was like it was serious XM. I got you. I was listening to like Richard Pryor I got you. <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was pretty cool. So we did that. Then like that Saturday morning, we went out to the beach and hung out and all that stuff. And then we did the gig that Saturday night. And Amy, what up? And came hey, back Sunday. Sis. So that's that, man. Yeah, it was pretty cool and fun. Now I had a question because I. Saw- <laughs> I saw this that picture of you on the beach, uh-huh. and I was like, I wonder if I wonder if Lou got his toes buried in the sand. <laughs> you know what's funny? So the first, so the first day we went to the beach, I, I actually didn't know we was head uh, head to the beach. Uh, one of the guys talking about, uh, oh, uh, y'all just come by my room. I have some, you know, I'm just gonna have some drinks. I'm thinking we're just going to his room, so I had on like my sandals and some socks on. Mm. So one of the guys said, "Dude, you just have a thing with socks, don't you?" And we get to the beach, you don't just get sand on your. I said, "I didn't know we're going to the beach, but okay." Quinn Moore is so disappointed in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn Moore is, so, is very disappointed in you. <laughs> How dare you not have your toes out in every situation say, let possible? Those toes yeah. out. Jesus yeah. Christ. So. So eventually, my toes came out. So <laughs> yeah, I had to let the socks go. I already. <laughs> that's what's up. Well, I mean, but ov- overall, it was it was like a dope situation. Yeah, like, yeah. As far as scenery and stuff like that. Oh yeah, and the real nice scenery. I mean, yeah. e- even like cause, uh, like you mentioned, like it was no TV and stuff like that. I think I think that's kind of the point with a lot of those uh, like destination spots mm-hmm. uh, because it's like the you know scenery is beautiful, beautiful. You know, clear water, sand beaches, and stuff like yeah. that. Now, and I think it's, it's, if it's like a vacation purpose, one of those spots is more so to have you like go outside and yeah. enjoy the scenery, the weather, yeah. and all that good stuff. So, so um, yeah, I probably wouldn't. I don't watch much TV now. Yeah, I'm so, the same so, way. I don't TV is. Man. So I probably I probably wouldn't have been watching much. Uh, and don't let it be a new beach. <laughs> I would have had more than yeah. toes out, brother. As yeah, a matter of fact, socks just would have been my only thing on. Yeah, and it's it's funny, man, because uh, when, uh, the first pl- when we were staying in the Barbados, the the hotel was standing there. They did have a TV, and when I cut the TV on, it was like it was about seven channels that mm. was functioning. The rest of it was like static. I got you. I like dang. That, you remember you remember back before they start having these digital TVs where yeah. where it just be static. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, you. So, I got you. So that was. That was that situation. I'm like, okay, I'm turning this off. But yeah. <laughs> now, um, if you had to choose, and I don't know, um, Jay, I know when you were in the army, you were still musically, you know, involved. Yeah, in, kinda. Kinda. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Lou, yeah. and then Jay, I guess you can answer this too. But Lou, do you prefer to travel? As a musician, having that experience to go overseas and everything, or do you prefer local gigs? Uh, well, it depends on where I'm traveling to. For one, <laughs> uh, like if it's if it's like overseas, man, I I really I really like to take as much advantage of that as I would like to to just to get that experience to you know just different cultures and all of that. What about you, Jay? Um, I I would say I would say I'm around the same. I just um 
I just want the, you know, I, w- I would like them to just make sure, you know, the ends justify the means, everything make sense uh, uh, business-wise. Um, of course, you know, I would like to travel, especially like a little bit more now, mm-hmm. um, even if it is for a gig situation. Uh, but um, even with that, it's like don't don't ask me to go, you know, somewhere. And like I said, the ends really don't justify the means. Yeah, You feel what I'm saying? It's like, well, that money I can make here you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying whatever and i don't have to get on nobody playing so yeah so it, it's kind of it's kind of somewhere in between that but it, like i said if it makes sense then yeah I, I wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind traveling at all okay now uh i i'm not interviewing y'all but you i sound do. like it <laughs> <laughs> but i have questions based off of conversations that i've had with different musicians uh this past weekend so i'm gonna pose this question it's a hot topic um amongst i know civilians and musicians uh, <laughs> but um when when musicians are playing for church settings and this is total opposite of you know the whole traveling thing but when musicians are playing for church settings are y'all concerned about actually gleaning from the word or are you solely concerned about the money why you look at me? <laughs> <laughs> Lou looking at me like you go to church. Yes, <laughs> yes I, I, I mean I, that's yes, a genuine I question. For church. Like, are you guys like okay? I want to play for this establishment and this ministry, but I need to be fed at the same time. I I very rare rarely hear a musician be like I can't I can't mess with that church because I don't care how much they want they gonna pay me. Uh, I can't receive from that church. I don't ever hear musicians say mm-hmm. that. It's more so like oh doc, uh, I got a good bag over there. So you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's what I hear. Are musicians totally? concerned about the pay or are or is your soul <laughs> a priority as well well here's my thing why do you keep looking at me like that <laughs> <laughs> is your soul lost brother <laughs> do you know jesus <laughs> uh so 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 far as for me um for so you in your house <laughs> uh far as for me uh, I've never really been too caught up into uh, trying to make a gazillion dollars at a church because I I think I really think more on the logical end. Uh, far as going to you know, if you go to a medium sized church, you gotta you still gotta be mindful of of yeah. the numbers of people that's you know that's at the church, you know. You got I'm got to kind of go with what the makes musician sense. has to be mindful for sure. Yeah, musician. Because I'm glad you like, said that. I said that last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just it's it's like to me it's like a logical thing, you know. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I got. <laughs> yeah, um. To. So for me, well, first of all, I'm gonna say this. Hey, man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. We appreciate y'all for listening, man. Uh, talk to us, holler at us, man. Y'all can definitely. Uh, chime in on some of these questions if you want to. Y'all can ask us questions as well. All this stuff uh, uh, is live and it is interactive, man. And we just want to, you know, chop it up with y'all too. So uh, if y'all want to, if y'all want to comment and all that good stuff, yeah. please make sure y'all do that, man. Um, so as far as as far as me and church go, clean. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be what it is either way. As far as as far as me and church is concerned, me personally, I'm. I'm more so burnt out on on church. Yeah, I'm burnt out on church. Uh, I'm burnt out on uh, religion as a whole. Uh, of course, there are some things. Uh, there are some things in religion that uh, are my foundation still. Um, and I did, you know, I was able to take some good things away uh, from religion. But for the most part, I'm I'm burnt out on it. So for me personally, that's really not what I go for. So you um, saying you go for the money? It's it's, it's church. Paycheck. Church is more so a job for me, and and mm-hmm. I mean, um, because I mean, I mean, it's like this. Um, uh, so you know, for the longest, uh, my my godparents, my godparents, they uh, you know, they were my uh, you know, past and first lady, and I do I do kind of still consider that you know yeah. david harris home, what up what up you know home church and stuff like that but at the end of the day man um 
I just I just got to a point where I noticed, man, like just those those talks that me and my goddad would have for hours, um, or uh, us sitting at the dinner table, you know, us in the uh, us sitting at the dinner table, and my godmom pulling me to the side, uh, you know, talking to me and stuff like that. Um, those those situations. I mean, the fact that you know, like you know, we. You know, again, outside of church, man, mm-hmm. like cried together, uh, went through stuff together, uh, how they how they um, man, I can I can even go as far as to say, man, they really um, they really instilled a lot in me outside of church. They they saved my life. I was a about to say times, they saved your life. A you lot was of on times, your way to hell. like. <laughs> <laughs> outside outside of church mm-hmm. um but quick story quick story so last week uh we t- we, uh, we talked about um not to interrupt you but up? we see uh i see your comments uh bo and marcus and i'm gonna read them to jay and lou so they can address your comments okay but go ahead so uh so quick uh so just quick story last week uh when i was talking about my gigs i was talking about you know how i met bernard right and uh you know uh fourth of july uh, for July, that was the day. Uh, that was the day mm-hmm. uh, that my daddy died. I never really got a chance to see him, mm-hmm. and uh, I never really heard nothing but bad things about him. Um, I, I was just depending on my mama to tell me the truth. Yeah, it, it, it just went over your head. You missed all of that. Anyway, you just gonna you just gonna quote, you just <laughs> I was gonna trying to see if song. he was gonna catch it, but no. <laughs> so so real quick story, uh, real quick story. So uh, Fourth of July, it was a very hard day for me. This particular Fourth of July, I, and I forget the year that it was. Um, Paul was not Rolling Stone. <laughs> no, no, no. He was, but that's another story. Wasn't it two thousand and six? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. No, uh, well, not. It, uh, I'm talking about the year that this particular situation happened. So my guy there, who's my pastor, um, so th- this was like a real dark day, mm-hmm. this particular day. I'm talking about I'm locked in my house, all the lights off, I'm drink, I'm drinking, I'm drunk, I'm crying, like like all that stuff. I'm really like going through it, halfway homicidal. Like I'm like really going through it that day, man. And it's, so it just so happened that my, you know, he texts me and, he, you know, hey, Biggie, you know, I know what today is, just want to let you know. You know I'm here. You know I'm here if you need me. And I'm I'm being like you know you know hey pop you know I appreciate that but you know it really ain't nothing you can tell me or talk to me about right blah blah. blah. I mean if anything I just need some more liquor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. What did he send you? You know what I'm saying. If I can tell the story, bro, My can head. I tell us? Thank you. So um so I'm you know I'm like man if anything I just need some more liquor. Mm-hmm. Um so um he was like well I ain't got no liquor but I got a nice I, I got a dope glass of kool-aid for you yeah right <laughs> so i'm like ha, ha, whatever um so about an hour and so go by there's a knock on my door there's a knock on my door and you know i'm a, i'm on 10 because i'm like who the if is knocking on my door mm-hmm. i ain't expecting nobody you know and i always had this rule like don't don't come to my crib if if you ain't you know gave me no type of notice or yeah. anything like that anyway he sent somebody over there. You know what I'm saying? I opened the door all hostile, and they like, yo, 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 look. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm here. Mm-hmm. They had a they had a glass of Kool-Aid. Yeah. It, it was like, all I know is I'm supposed to give you this glass of Kool-Aid. That, that did everything for me. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that moment right there, to me, was more special than any moment I ever had in anybody's church. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's stuff like that. It's stuff like that that will do more for me mm-hmm. than sha ta 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 ta. Yeah. You know, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. That does nothing for me. Yeah. But moments like that outside of church, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Those are the moments that I look for from pe- from people who are who are supposed to be like my mm-hmm. uh, spiritual advisors and stuff like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So with that being said. I'm more so when when it comes to my spiritual wellness, my mental wellness, my my mental, you know what I'm saying, uh my spiritual well being, my spiritual health and stuff like that. I'm I I work on that outside of church. Mm-hmm. I work on that like 
Monday through Friday, not you know, mo- you know, not just on Sunday morning. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So with that being said, like like just me personally, I don't really get that in church. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of church just for me is more so just is theatrics and it's a show. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that there aren't people in you know that don't care about their members and I'm not I'm not saying that at mm-hmm. all. I'm just talking about for me. I've just like I've found most most of my spiritual and mental health outside of four mm-hmm. walls on Sunday. With that, so with that being said, when I do go to uh, when I am playing for somebody church, you know I'm I'm more so there for that, and then you know we can talk about my my mental and spiritual health mm-hmm. after, yeah, or outside of that. Okay, so Bo said in regards to that question, Bo said. I mean, you got where you work and where you worship. They can be the same place, but oftentimes it won't be just because it won't be just because life. But uh, <laughs> so he basically saying that most times it probably won't be the same place because of life. He said, what I will say is pastors need to stop looking for employees and expecting a new member to show up on Sundays. Hmm. That's where stuff gets out of hand. N- not not setting that, not really setting, I, I mean, just kind of like relationship, just not setting that boundary. Mm-hmm. You feel know what I'm saying? It's like, because that's what happens, you know, you'll hire a musician and then kind of expect them to be that member. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing, too. Like, I'm at a point now, I can't, I can't really just see myself going to church just to be there. Like, if I'm not, if I'm not, Playing, oh yeah! If I'm not playing, like I don't, I, I, I it feels, stop. It, do it feel awkward, man? I stopped it, seeing myself as anybody's member like uh-huh. years ago. Yeah, like if if I'm not playing, I, like I, I'm, you know, I'm good on it, you know. Yeah, I've I've, I've had that same feeling for I appreciate for a long you, time myself, feeling awkward if I'm not there playing, mm-hmm. or if, and then, uh, then sometimes you go in there and somebody somebody see you, then they want you to come play. And be, and I'm like I don't think I want to go up there anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It depends on who it is. It depends on who it is. Sometimes just like so. when just like when you go to a shed or a jam session, you just you kind of just sit there to you know whatever, and they be like, hey, yeah. Hit you with that. Now, um, Marcus said, if you can just scroll up just a little bit, because uh, you got to see the comments too. Yeah. Marcus <laughs> said. What y'all, what y'all mean burnt out? I think this is because Jay, you said burnt out. Yeah, I'm yeah. Honestly, said, I'm burnt out myself. He said, what y'all mean burnt out with church? I I hear that too much to not understand what y'all mean. Can y'all break that down? What do y'all mean by so, burnt out? So for me, uh, so for me, my burnt out, uh, kind of kind of going back to, um, kind of going back to the theatrics of everything. Um, it's 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 like. <sighs> just, just, like I, 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 without without just getting too deep, um, more so I'm, I'm burnt out with the theatrics. I'm burnt out with, um, you know, uh, is uh, I'm uh, again. I'm not saying every church is like this. I'm, I'm but uh, like your good, the good majority, the good majority of a lot a lot of these churches, they don't even do like real outreach. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, is like you know. It, They'll they'll sit here and talk like it's about routine just Sunday, yeah, Sunday it, it, morning. Yeah, it it's, it's like routine. It's like and and a lot of the stuff that they do on Sunday morning is like they can't they can't even do during the week or they don't do during mm-hmm. the week. It's like growing up, growing up like all all that stuff, all that stuff that my mom did on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. I would wake up at six o'clock in the morning hearing her do that at mm-hmm. the crib. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? It, it's like. And and just the just the culture of it, just the culture of of like you know, especially uh, black church stuff like just just the whole the whole culture of it. I'm just I'm I'm just I'm good on it. I'm I'm you know just I'm I'm straight. Um, Lou, did you want to address that? Yeah. So so far as me, when I'm saying I'm burned out, I'm just I'm just burned out far as. Having to learn songs every week. <laughs> well, I mean, having to, I having mean, to can learn you, can songs, you say having, to, just that? having to, you know, having to play. It's, it's like a, I feel like it's kind of almost like a wear and tear in a way. Like, uh, but I mean, but you do that for a living though. Yeah, and that's that. Well, that's kind of with everything. But I think it's, I think it's church more than anything because it's it's um, like learning 
stuff outside of church is not as compact as learning gospel songs because it's when you learn a gospel song you got an intro okay then you got a chorus well we got a verse probably then you probably got a lick going into the chorus <laughs> then you got a lick going into the verse then it might be something in the middle of that next verse then it's a vamp or a bridge so you say then it's a vamp <laughs> then it's about <laughs> then it's about 30 runs of licks <laughs> each time building in the vamp then it's in the song then the we might not be doing the then music? we might not be doing that song sunday morning <laughs> I mean, uh, you ever you ever listen to you ever listen to uh, Snarky Puppy? Yeah, yeah, but, I, yeah, but I don't ever have to learn. Yeah, so I, so I don't <laughs> learn. Yeah. I don't learn yeah. Snarky Puppy. You, I don't. That's not the type of band I play with. You yeah. know, so you know, before I let go is. <laughs> 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 you just stick it to the yearning, Dallas mixtape. You know, uh, weak. Wow, yeah. good question, Bo. I'm gonna get to you in just a second. So, y'all, David Harris said. Mm-hmm. When is the last time you searched for a church home that had nothing to do with your gifting? Most musicians have never done that in their lives because they were born in the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, They started playing in. So basically born at the church that you are playing in. And then when they are good enough or professional, they are on staff wherever they fit. But when have you or you guys made the decision to serve where we are actually being fed. Additionally, have you gone to counseling to address the emo? <laughs> Additionally, have you gone to counseling to address the emotions and feelings associated with said four, seven four? What is seven four? I don't know what that is. Fourth of July. Oh, talking to you. Yeah, he talking okay, to me. Okay, okay. I know you discussed this last week as well. We're also inside of a month when that time comes up again. I hear a lot of informal therapy talk in place with you as you talk as you talk it out, praying for you. Okay, so well, basically, why have y'all ever searched for a church outside of where you were born or without dealing with your gift? Uh, well, well, first of all. Um, and Jay, have you addressed your issues? Well, well, well fir- first of all, uh, first of all, uh, shout out to David Harris. Um, um, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that I know you, but it sounds like you tune in quite a bit, man. So uh, I appreciate your support on that. Also, I appreciate your question. The thing about, so I did, I did explain that I search. Um, like I said, I work on my mental and and mental and spiritual health outside of it. Um, outside of the four walls. I don't think the four walls of church is the only place you can work on your spiritual mm. and mental health. Um, that, that same guy, that same guy that uh, gave me, uh, that sent me the Kool-Aid, um, that's my God dad, and, that, um, and that's also my pastor. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, you know, that's um, the same person, uh, the same person um, that I was having those, uh, you know, two o'clock, in the morning conversations with Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so so um and and like uh i'm a i'm a big advocate of therapy i'm a big advocate of like you know talking to somebody um you know um i'm i'm also even even on the other end of it i'm also a big advocate of you know the people that i care about the people that i give a fuck about letting them know that yo i do care about you i do Mm -hmm. you know whatever so i i have um i i I, I actually i actually have done that david but um yeah i i I have, I have done that it's just that i don't think that church is the only place that you can do those things okay and 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 to, uh i don't know if it was david or you but it was david but uh they asked me have i addressed those issues well yeah yeah he was saying that like have you been to therapy to address yeah, those? yeah, yeah I, I've, I've i've definitely addressed that that's why that's why um like if you if you heard me talk you uh you heard me talk about how over the years I've gotten better and better and better. There was a point in time where, um, and, and, and even if you knew me back then, there was a point in time where I walked around, uh, walked around angry all the time. Um, there was a point in time where it's like even even that day, uh, that because uh, what would happen with me is I would replay that day um, over. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking about Every down, year. down to the T. I could tell you. Uh, where was I at when it happened? Where, mm-hmm. how I got the phone call? Who called me? Uh, what I heard in the background when I called my mom? Yeah. Uh, this is that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, 
um and and I could and I was here at at 12:35. I was here at 2:04. I was here at I would replay that whole day and I would just I just let that whole experience kind of consume me. Also dealing with unresolved issues that I did have with my dad, right? Um so over time over it, and it and it took some time, but I can definitely say I'm a lot better now. And that's uh, again, that's because of the work that I did mentally, spiritually. Uh, there was a lot of work that came into that, as opposed to just me uh, sitting there and let all of that fester. So yeah, I, I, I've definitely, I've definitely done the work, man. But I, I really appreciate your question though, because a lot of people need to hear and, uh, yes. you know, deal with that type of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Now, Lou. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bo, yes. Bo came. <laughs> Bo came for you. I'm gonna get you now. Uh, <laughs> well, well, well. Yeah. So Bo came for you. He said, but you can't blame church. That's and because you said um about learning the different intricates of the music mm-hmm. that is given to you and everything. So Bo said, but you can't blame church. That's a music genre. So are you sick of gospel or are you sick of church? And then Marcus and I want you to answer that but then marcus also said what lucius just said man he said your whole name what lucius just said is what i'd agree with having to learn create or improvise an entire production and so much pressure to carry things but church itself i don't think i could say i'm burnt out on so can you address what uh big bro george davis in the building i gotta i gotta shout him out what's up big bro and my cousin raymond hey drew um oh, drew, drew what, here. what up boy well we're drew I, I saw your question you asked what are we talking about tonight so well well we've been talking about a lot but what's the question on the platform right now is um uh, musicians basically uh what did i say something about um uh, oh we because <laughs> we don't say so much uh basically musicians Me, uh, he was being talking, in he, the he, church he, he, for he, pay he, versus uh you know, uh, looking for a church spiritually yeah. to be fed. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah. So Lou. So we're talking about being burnt out. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Well, well, hold on. Well, hold on. Because I want to make I want to make sure I, I properly address David. Because he said, not sure if I'm hearing that you uh, that you saw the church that was uh, absent for your gifting. No. Uh, well, well, that that's kind of my point. I wasn't. I well, to, a quick answer would be no. I wasn't seeking a church uh, for that purpose. I I, I saw it. I saw it um, outside of church, but I mean, I, it, I, I literally, I wasn't looking for it there, but I found it and I did get it both spirit, spiritually and mentally. So no, I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. He said, oh, let me <laughs> end this conversation. Sir, no, you need to stay. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Lou, can mm-hmm. you, <laughs> that threw me off. Lou, can you address what Bo said? He said, is it the fact that you're tired of gospel or is it the actual church? Uh, I'm not it's, it's I'm not tired of, of of gospel or the church. It's the I think it's I I, I guess I want to say it's the idea of of just playing or playing uh just Sunday to Sunday, just playing, playing, playing. I think I'm kind of looking at uh I, I feel like I want to uh, take a little break or something. Yeah. Because now, you know, especially when you when you're doing different, you when you find yourself able to doing different things, as far as playing other instruments, producing, and all of that, and creating stuff. You know, you start tapping into these other hats and being able to doing things. Then sometimes you just want to take a break from from this area and just get more into doing other things. Like, if I could, I would I would like to have seven do seven percent of creating music. And thirty percent of playing or playing gigs, because I'm getting more into uh, y'all acting up in the and comments, creating boy. and production, and anything else. Yeah, so, I got you. So yeah. Um, I right, so uh, boy, uh, Dave, you gonna make this a me and you conversation, huh? Nah, I think it's a dope conversation, Dave. So I, I I say that to be funny, but um, I don't think it's the issue. Uh, just uh, because you said you said you think, <laughs> oh, oh, so, so you, you want to backslide? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I've been backsliding for about ten years. <laughs> it's too late. Uh, yeah. but, but back, but back to uh, back to David. No, I don't think it's the issue. More so because the 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 overall goal is to get better, and I'm I'm a testament of 
me being better. How many people do you know that shout in church every Sunday and they still deal with the same stuff? Mm. You feel what I'm saying? What? So, and they're not, and they're not musicians. They're not, you know, in, in, they're there to be members, but they still, they go through the the theatrics and deal with the same stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I, I sought to be overall better and it did work cause I'm, I'm better, you know, so. Now, I will say from a perspective of a person who grew up in church. Pat told Bo to sit, sit your tail down. <laughs> <laughs> from, a, from a perspective of a person who grew up in church, you know, came out my mom's womb, you know, singing. Um, oh, I'm I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Can can we can we uh, comment on what Mama Queen said? She yeah. So she I, I was getting ready to get to that. Shout out to Mama Queen. Mama Queen said being burnt out on church is not burnt out on God. Thank and, you. And, and, ah, and bye, I bye, was bye. getting Thank ready you. to I was getting ready to say that. So being a person who grew up in church, you're automatically and and you coming from a family who is already musically inclined can sing, mm -hmm. can play music, can preach or whatever. So you, you automatically fall into those uh, those sectors of the church for you to serve in, whether it's with pay or without pay. You know, you serve in those sectors and you just literally get tired. Like people, people don't realize the church is a spiritual healing place, but also it is all encompassing of business. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that they want church to always be the spiritual part or whatever, but church is also a business. People don't want to talk about that, but yeah. me being a person who handled the finances at my church, it is a business. Yes, it is a time where you get burnt out because especially if you are <laughs> especially if you are a person who um have a a job as like the church is not your job you have an actual job mm -hmm. and then you have to come home and handle the affairs of the chair of the church it can be very uh uh you're burning a candle at both sticks at that point and i agree it's it's lou it's nothing wrong with saying yeah. you know what i want a different change of scenery mm -hmm. as just as long as you're doing it from a perspective of actually pouring back into yourself and not I want to change the scenery because I'm tired and I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. You know, I think that's a different perspective to have. It's like, hey, I need to step back. I encourage anybody, especially musicians, and I don't see musicians do this often. Y'all don't take vacations. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't y'all mm -hmm. gig twenty four seven. Y'all don't take a vacation to step away from the church, to step away from Deep Ellum, to, to step away from these third party companies, from these corporate sectors to say, you know what, let me decompress. Yeah. Let me get my stuff together. Let me get my stuff together. Let me get myself mentally together Church and emotionally. <laughs> because Jay, I think we had this conversation before yeah. where you were saying People, there's healing in music. So when people come to hear you guys, whether it's in the church center or outside of church, whatever you plan is pouring into somebody's spirit. But if you don't take that time, your pastors are going on vacations, mm -hmm. you know, and the uh, different members and, and different leaders who are serving in the church are going on vacations. If you don't take that time to actually take a step back and say, let me get myself together so I can be effective in this role, then you're going to get burnt out and it's going to start looking the ugly way. Uh, also, also, I'm going to say this, and this is something that a lot of people can't say, even regular members. Um when it comes to <laughs> he said that's what i'm tired of sister johnson being getting delivered since i was 12. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious <laughs> right but i can i can also say this too when it comes to me when it comes to me it you know especially if i got it just like um <laughs> just just like if i had to call my pastor first lady at two o'clock in the morning they can definitely do that with me and i will deliver a lot of people can't say it. like with 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 your pastor and first first lady and and I know I know some some relationships when it comes to pastor and first lady verse member I know in 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 most situations there's a line to be drawn mm -hmm. but um with my my pastor can even come back and talk to me mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because you know they go through stuff too they're human too yeah I used to tell people all the time the church can have the church can have pastor and first lady. I'm here for Dwight and Dimple. 
I want to mm-hmm. make sure Dwight and Dimple are cool because if Dwight and Dimple aren't cool, how are they going? If they're if Dwight and Dimple aren't their best selves, how right. how is Pastor and First Lady going to be? The, so and so you run into them situations where it's like, oh, and, and of course you know, uh, you know, of course you know they have overseers and you know stuff like that, blah yeah. blah blah. But like like. Can your pastor and first lady can they really open up and and talk to you without the stigma of oh you a pastor you not supposed to be oh you a first yes. lady you not supposed be, to be be that person you feel what I'm saying yeah. so just like so just like I can I can draw from them with that they can turn around and draw from me with that and you, you don't see that uh, Jay said let's keep it real many churches want more for less money. Mm-hmm. That too can contribute to the burnout. Not all, but a good, month, True. good meaning. And yeah. and you and you're right. And uh, Lou uh, J uh, uh, JJ Lou mm-hmm. said something earlier where he was saying, um, you know, think about uh, when you are a musician and you're going to go play for a ministry. Look at the size of the church, or you know, do your be realistic. Do you, do we, what be realistic yeah be realistic yeah. and do your recon like mm-hmm. just because somebody sit there and say hey this this church is looking for something listen in dfw shed sessions group there is constantly somebody sitting mm-hmm. there saying church need this church need that and bass player need this this is this do your recon so you know what what atmosphere you're stepping in uh, also if y'all gonna make those posts please be specific on what type of musician don't just say musician <laughs> yeah <laughs> jesus Christ. i plug <laughs> y'all, keep, y'all keep me with that so Church looking for a musician okay bass player guitar so, player what are you right. looking for bro so so jj to 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 uh kind of spill on what you just said as a musician you say the church want more for less but i also task i now listen like i said i'm on both sides and jay and lou knows this i'm on both sides i'm on the hiring side mm-hmm. and i'm i am the higher word so i see both sides now are all church working in good ethics? No, let's be realistic. A lot of church mm-hmm. are not working in good ethics. However, I got just, a comment about that. Off <laughs> just <laughs> like there is responsibility on the ministry that is hiring you, there is certainly responsibility on the musicians. Do your homework on the ministry. If you look at DFW Shade Sessions Group, there are times where people have gone in on certain ministries and given enlightenment on the conditions there. Not saying that a church can't change, but it's like, bruh, that information has been put in front of you and you still went there and now you're miserable so like do your recon and then you know what type of position don't go to a small church expecting six hundred dollars a week that's not realistic Mm -hmm. that's not and and at that point now who's not being real with you know with who like the responsibility is on both parties well well, and and uh and i kind of touched on this last week too man um it is it's all in the vein of being realistic right like um like what is it what is it that you're doing right like if you uh, I said this last week. If if your only job, like no rehearsals, your only job is to show up, mm-hmm. just play for praise and worship. You're not even staying the whole service and then dip to your yeah. other service or whatever. Is it really fair to ask for six hundred a week? Listen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For, from a from a small to mid sized church. And listen, you know, what I'm J J uh, J No, uh, Mama Queen just said said something. She said, many churches pay musicians and pastors get nothing, but I know this is not that group. Now, listen, my pastor Mm. is not on payroll. So you had a pastor who works a nine to five Mm -hmm. and sometimes more hours go home. And I can speak about it because the pastor is my father. I live with them. I know. And a couple of people on this thread can vouch for that. My pastor, he does not he does not get paid at the ministry. Shoot, I can't even tell. I'm gonna be honest. I can't even tell you when was the last time he got a decent love offering, and it's not because he didn't want it or the ministry couldn't give it. It was simply because he was just concerned about the members. Mm-hmm. But in that same breath, everybody else was on payroll but yeah. him. 
the musicians was literally getting paid more and you had and, and, and you had all these musicians you didn't didn't have you didn't just have the band uh the drummer and the and the keyboardist you had a bass player you had a guitarist you had all this and these people are on a consistent payroll every week but the pastor is not getting nothing so that's why i say musicians you have to be realistic yeah. you know in the conditions that you're trying to you know perform at a church okay i'm gonna flip the script for a second since we since we was um you know we definitely I, i'm sorry we, for bringing this this is great combo right here so <laughs> so on the end of that i just want to say on the other end of of i guess what some of these churches expect far as music when it's like a one or two like maybe maybe a three-piece band and they want every piece of the music like far as and it could be like a, the music call for like a seven piece band yeah uh instrument instrument like especially like i guess a lot of this what ccm music yeah where it's like you know it's it's a lot of guitar stuff or, or whatever they or got somebody. they got they can got, you, a, they got an electric guitar acoustic guitar a string section yeah a horn section drums and percussion uh <laughs> all yeah, of that. Yeah. and you expecting to get that exact same sound with a three piece <laughs> <laughs> come on bro can you go to uh use a you got guitar on your keyboard <laughs> um no i'm just gonna play piano thank you good night now bo did say uh well, David said, but too many of us allow those exponential tasks to happen because we've prioritized the check out of necessity. That's mm -hmm. good. That's real good. And then both said, if a church has a <laughs> if a church has a choir, I'm not playing there because I know what that comes with. And that's yeah. and that's good because you already know what you will and won't deal with. He said musicians try to play victim more than they bass. play they in, they instruments. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you yeah. know what choir means. And then um and then he said, but if you know you can't pay a six piece band as a pastor, lower your expectations. I agree yeah. with that as well. Nobody was tripping when niggas was playing Ricky Diller with a two piece. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, make it work. Nah, forget that. <laughs> yeah, but but Ricky Diller Never done. He CC. said, "Read now." <laughs> Both said, "Read mine now." Like, <laughs> Both Bo want to call in. I'm surprised he ain't pulled up yet on the cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got something I to got say. Something to say. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, but like, you know, Free. us being on this topic, it, and, it and I think a, I, <laughs> us being on this topic, a lot of a lot of musicians, you know. Both said something. They played a victim, and you always. I've been. I've been this close to saying, "Can we get a pastor on this podcast <laughs> just to oh, hear man. their perspective?" Yeah. Because musicians do. I'll tell you who will be a perfect person to get who? on here. A pastor, Chan Horton. Okay. Chan is. Horton is a musician. Oh, the keyboard player. And, yeah. He, I, I've I've played with Chan. Chan Horton. We got to get you on here, Doc. You uh, I, I've actually played. I've actually uh, played with Chan in that uh, in that couple situation. Oh, okay. He was on keys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool people, man. Yeah, yeah. he's cool. Yeah, yeah. he's definitely cool. I mean, to have a dialogue between musicians and a pastor and to actually see both perspectives in real time, yeah. I think that would be dope because musicians do play. Um, I mean, it's 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 two sides. <laughs> Bo said, yeah. Bo is that pastor. Exactly. <laughs> what's, the name, what's the name of your church, Bo? <laughs> what's the name of your church, Bo? <laughs> Water and the Wine Baptist. <laughs> Pentecostal St. Lucius. He said, Yep. Oh, we're talking about that guy you just said, Channing. He said, Chan. uh, yeah. He's fur in his perspective because he was a musician mm -hmm. as well. And still yeah. is. And, uh, still and, is. And, and still is. Uh, like I said, a uh, uh, cool dude. Uh, definitely cool. Dude. I would love uh, to sit down and talk with Chan. But, but yeah, man, Um, uh, you know, kind of like Bo said, it's uh, it's two sides to every story, man. Well, it's three sides your side, they side, and, yeah. the, and truth. the truth. Um, and and I do feel like uh, there's victim there's there's victimization on both ends. Yeah. I feel like there's there's some there's some churches that do right, and then there's some that don't. There's mm -hmm. some musicians that do right, and then there's some that don't. Um, it's it's a it's, it's it's both sides. So I you know it's just about. It, I I mean it's just you know <laughs> sweep around your own front. Now 
now something else i want to <laughs> mama queen you just said something you said this is good i am a mom of musician mama queen is the mother of Bo. So I don't know how yeah. he is the way he is, and she's so lovely. But <laughs> yeah, uh, he said, uh, "Mama Queen said I am a mom of a musician, and I spent many years in the finance room. I want to speak to that, cause like, listen." He said, mm -hmm. "My big bro said, let's go to old school church, just play and preach for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That'll solve everything. Now you your own problem." <laughs> I want to also say this, right? I mean, you can always so, get the trigger with the right. oh hoop trick. Hey, oh. hey, don't hey, sleep, don't hey, sleep, don't sleep, sleep on the hoop triggers. The, the I ain't gonna lie, that that, that done saved us many a times. I, I was, ain't gonna I was, lie. I was a church DJ for a good minute. Listen, <laughs> Who, I, I was using hoop triggers and uh. Uh, well, well, loop community, loop community. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Drew. Yeah, listen, uh, but um, Bo would be that person too, to play for himself, <laughs> <laughs> right? What I was about to say is something else that that crosses my desk, or I see cross the desk of the finance, finance people at the church since we're on the topic is musicians talk about. Oh, I don't know how deep I can go with this, but talk mm -hmm. about from a business perspective. Do not go to these churches that have now you you have the other ones, but do not go to these churches that have their finance books in order, asking them to pay you under the table. Do not mm. because at the end of the day, if they are no, saying trying to, huh trying to avoid taxes yeah trying to avoid it. taxes yeah. and stuff like I'm not even I'm not. Listen, Bo, I ain't even <laughs> got on that when he said not tithing. Listen, I have not even touched on not tithing. <laughs> musicians, I, listen, I ain't even going to go on that route. But I see a lot of musicians say, hey, do you know a place that needs a musician, but they're not on 10, they're not 1099 in us or whatever. And it's like, at what point do you take responsibility for your finances and say, listen, you know, I know this church is going to pay me in a check or I know a, this church is going to run me through their uh, their uh, 1099 software. So let me get my infer my affairs in order. A lot of musicians, they always want to run to a church paying them on the table. Why? She was a, she was, it helped me when I uh, get my eyes done. She was like, I mean, yeah. get my eyes back. But then, but I don't know, just to kind of, and, and I, I can't, there's a part of me that want to, you know, that kind of want to uh, move off the subject, but I mean, we here, so we might as well we might as well stick in. But I mean, my question, my question, even as far as the tithing thing go, if you if you're, uh, I mean, if the relationship established is that you're just more so an an employee, you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. of that of that church, and that's not your home church, are you still supposed to tithe? Good point because mm -hmm. I serve at two ministries. It, it, and it's because it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of cats. It's a lot of cats. Like I said, like even even me, even me. Uh, you know, at the churches that I play for every Sunday, you know, I'm an employee. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying I'm not an employee. I'm not a member. But even as far as um my my home church again, uh again whatever they need from me they can you know they can ask so. right now uh i serve at two ministries i tithe at my home church and the other ministry i get paid for for doing praise and worship i don't tithe there i do give like a free will offering or whatever that i have but i don't tithe there but i do notice some musicians don't tithe you know at the different locations and that's okay if you have a home church but like Bo said and 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 jay you just said tithing is not just that's a that's a that's a thing that you know the church harp on tithing is not just monetary it's what you put into like my cousin drew this dude have poured into his church in equipment streaming equipment um instruments uh lighting production that's tithing as well it's it, not it just is, monetary it, it it is but but if you if you really peep it'd be a lot of churches that it be a lot of churches that overlook that though a yeah. lot of churches will oh they won't see they won't see the time the those effort, missing boards the, <laughs> the, the the time the time the effort the 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 stuff that's done off the books by anybody on your staff. A lot of, uh, you know, as far as as far as some churches go, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those people, they see it, 
They only see tithes through dollars. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's another two way street situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's another two way street situation, man. It's been, been definitely been a dope conversation. Though. Yeah, I got yeah, a question. Don't. What up, uh, though? So, since we own churches. <laughs> I guess it's just the topic for the night. It's just the topic. We we about, we about to move to somewhere else, but I just got I just got I, one. I just got a pet pee. I got a pee, man. So <laughs> why is it that when you pull up at the storefront? Why That's is good, it David. Up, That's good. You pull up at that storefront church. He and said it's not dope. Bible or Webster. And the equipment is um from the sound to the keyboards to the drums is you crappy. Know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Why is that? Because um, uh, it, and you it's know, kind, it's kind and you of know the, when you pull up, you be like, oh. it's kind. Well, so because <laughs> it's kind of the same situation. It's kind of the same situation when when uh, people are looking for good musicians, right? Yeah, they they aren't willing to invest mm-hmm. in what it is uh, what it is they're looking for. Yeah, and and trust me, like I have a lot of experience. Like I used to work at Guitar Center, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you would see, you know, like even even with your even with your uh, uh, tax write off uh, form that you you would see, yo, like the bare minimum quality is gonna cost this. Yeah. It's gonna cost this, but then they, you know, they still looking for, you know, and I and I understand, you know, there's a caveat for everything. Um, there's a caveat for everything, you know. Everybody can't afford those, those QSCs and those this mm-hmm. is that and the other. But you know, just my thing is just always, yo. If if you just if you have an expectancy for a certain thing right then and there yeah. you have to invest in it. Mm-hmm. you like you you have to you have either cuz cuz how i think how i think about it how i think about it bro like if you can't afford something if if, if you if you can't afford something and like it might just and but you you want something or you feel like you feel like you just have to have that something you feel like you're not going to be able to move forward without that something mm-hmm. it might just be best to wait until you get your finances in order yeah then right. get it i don't see you know enough churches saying? backlining i don't see enough ch- churches backlining what do you mean like backlining their uh mus- uh their instruments mm-hmm. to the point where the musician don't have to bring their equipment just having it there oh. i don't see that enough um calvin hickerson thank you for joining us he said yo yo listen when you talk about when you when you talk about somebody that we definitely need to get on the podcast man shout out to the homie calvin if, if re, like real like real quick if i can just give a give a proper shout out to the homie calvin man when when you want to talk about the definition like these these past couple of years uh you remember when uh, our good brother aaron we were Abram we were was on mm-hmm. and we uh and uh we were just talking about just the boss mindset um and and also watching other people yeah and how they move and watching people who are like better than you and what you know how they move my two people has been Aaron Weaver mm-hmm. and Calvin man like when you want to talk about the definition of a boss the definition of an entrepreneur um, even though, even though starting off when I was working at Guitar Center, he was one of them people that came in and kept on a discount. But, <laughs> but man, I'm talking about starting off. You know, what I'm saying I'm, this dude is running so many. Uh, this dude is running so many businesses now, bro. Uh, uh, a car, car share, car share service. Uh, he does. He does lessons. <laughs> Stupid. Take my I read the sound crap. I'm on the quick. I feel that uh, uh, car share service. Um, um, uh, party buzz. Uh-huh. Uh, he got he got like a couple. He got a couple storefronts. Um, he's a DJ. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, dude, like Shout like like, out to Calvin. like like he's a DJ. He does um like dude like it's it's really like he's a chef. He's a chef. He has an oh, he, good. He, dude. He has an event center. Um, man, y'all y'all uh man uh uh if y'all see uh Calvin Hickerson, man, make sure you follow him, man, and 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 support him, man. When it's I say Patrick, that's why he rich now, <laughs> bro. Listen, listen, man. Like like um uh, like just his his entrepreneurial mindset, and it's like it, he's always popping up with another business venture and stuff like yeah, that. That's what's up. And, and and is he a musician? Yes, and, and so he's so a so so you just said a mouthful. Different ventures outside of music. 
or outside of him playing. He has mm-hmm. all these businesses. Well, well, I mean, multiple streams of income, but yeah, that's yes. a, that, that's a that's a definitely something important to have. But he's also a, uh, that's also kind of like another Niggas conversation. Are these days. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, but yo, when when I say like uh, like I said, man, y'all follow uh, Calvin Hickerson, man, like that. If if you even if you just want to watch that guy and just learn something, man, like if you really want some motivation on how to just like stop being lazy and I don't get think up. You apply yourself. <laughs> Stop being! Uh, I really wish I had adults on this panel. You know what I'm saying? Stop and stop being lazy and applying yourself and stuff like that. Make sure you follow Calvin Hickerson, man. That's somebody we definitely got to get on the podcast, man, for sure. That's what's up, for man. For sure, man. That, that he is a entrepreneur's entrepreneur, man. That's really so, somebody to watch. So, uh, is there ever? T- uh, so I heard, and he backline. Talking mm. about backline, he got back. He backline. So he, black- he he backline Oregon Sound. He like. Yeah, oh. But see, that's dude. what I'm, and that's that's exactly what I'm. Saying. I know some, especially I call them mom and pop churches. Of course, they may not have the funds to like backline everything, and they may you may even come in and their their mixer is probably a brand you probably don't even know about or not familiar the with, or, <laughs> or that. Hatashi two thousand. <laughs> my 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 th- <laughs> my thing my thing is. My desire for the church, when when we speak about um, being responsible and being um, fair, right? I feel like the church should be able to, or eventually, you know what I'm saying, be, eventually be able to backline a lot of stuff or invest in equipment so members or musicians don't have to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, I, I can only say it because I've seen them do it, and I'm sure others have. George uh, Davis, Bo, I'm, I, Jay, Lou, you probably have mm-hmm. at the churches that you serve at. But musicians, they I've seen them go to Guitar Center and say, "Hey, I need this mixer for my church, or I need this, or I need that," and they give it to the church. They don't ask the church to pay for it. They don't they don't um ask the church to reimburse them. It's like, hey, this is for the church or whatever. And most times, you know, church I I, I can't speak about everybody's church, but I've seen churches not be grateful for that because you don't have to do and musicians, whether you know about mm-hmm. what whether you know it or not, that is a form of tithing. You're literally oh, sure. giving your resources, giving your money that you earned, and going to go buy something for the edifying of the kingdom. But you, so, you, so, but so, let, let me let's let's flip that though, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of churches, a lot of churches get themselves in trouble financially because they two things: one, they haven't grasped the fact that ministry ministry isn't just inside of that church setting right if your real concern is real ministry you can do things outside of thank jesus thank jesus you can do that out like even and and if anything the pandemic taught us that right you feel what i'm saying like even at that you had your media team pouring into like you didn't say, "Hey, church, I need this, 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 this." The me- the media team went and said, "Let me go on Amazon and buy this. Let right. me go on Amazon and buy this." Right. So, so it's like a, a, a lot of time again. That kind of go back to what I said earlier. There are some situations I think where it's okay to wait till you can properly invest in those things. You can do that and still do ministry. Mm-hmm. If, if like, especially if, if we're talking about the Christian church. You can you can still lead people to Christ and not have to have that brick and mortar every Sunday if that's really your main goal. Mm -hmm. But a lot of a lot of these churches haven't gotten out like they haven't thought outside of the box enough Mm -hmm. to be able to not see past that brick and mortar Mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying and everybody was like oh i gotta get back into there i gotta get and it's like you were so much effective you know not in those four walls yeah Yeah. but this is good yeah so how so so is it break time yet it is is break you gotta go potty that too but i was about (laughs) 
I was so excited. I was ready to jump to something else. I'm like, oh, well, let me see what this I time I mean, like. we can skip the break and just keep going, or if y'all need a look. Well, no, we, we, definitely not, we definitely not skipping a break, but because uh, okay. we got we got to promote we got to promote these. We got some, like I said, got homies that got dope businesses and yeah. dope business ventures and stuff like that. Buy my you new know. album. No, I'm yeah. just <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Track but four. if you if if you are watching and you have product, you have merchandise, yeah. you have businesses that you would like to be marketed during our intermission please uh forward those to either jl groove uh lou paul or you can send it to dfw shade station i better hurry up and do it before we start charging for advertisement yeah yeah we're not charging right now for advertisement but we will Mm -hmm. that's that's just being yours said traditional versus transitional (laughs) sir come on man Sir, come on, man, <laughs> come on, man, but everybody. That's my, yeah. that's my, that's my big bro, George Davis. And what, what's crazy is, um, man, like that, that, that man. Well, I, I'll get off, I'll get off that. But I tell you this: a lot of what you hear me say, and uh, you know, stuff like that. Nine times out of ten, it might, it might just be some type of regurgitation from something that I've learned from my big bro. So shout out to George Davis, man. Yes, yeah. I love you. Love you so much, man. So shout out to you, man. But we're not gonna touch that right now because we gotta go on break mm-hmm. and that's gonna open up something else. But we got you. Um, y'all that's stick around. Too, we getting ready to take a break, a, a brief intermission, so Lou can um go potty. Traditional mm-hmm. verse transition. Come on, man. You gotta do the number one and number two. <laughs> <laughs> JL Groove thinks he's the mastermind. You know what's crazy? I didn't say it, somebody else said it. Oh my gosh. Open the window. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say it. Somebody Look at you else over said there puffed it. Up. But man, uh, Kevin, I appreciate you, big homie. Big <laughs> homie, I definitely appreciate yeah. you, man. But yeah, so so yeah, we just gonna go ahead and take a break real quick. Is that what we doing? Yes. I right, bet. So listen, listen, everybody, man. This has been the dope conversation. Yeah. Do not go anywhere. We are gonna be right back. We just gonna take a real quick pause for the calls. Don't go anywhere. We gonna be right back all right while we while we pausing y'all uh y'all uh sh- like share subscribe we also have mm-hmm. a, a youtube page as well we gonna get into all that yep. later yep but yeah man uh but for the most part we appreciate y'all not no no mama queen not good night we not leaving we just taking a break <laughs> Stop, I love y'all. Nice. Mama Queen said she tired. Right, she tired. It's late. Right, right. It's late. You know what I'm saying? All right, but man, hey, listen, man, y'all don't go anywhere. We gonna be right back. Yep. See, I'm a photographer. You feel what I'm saying? So if they say a picture is worth a thousand words, it's my job to make sure they hear every last one of them. I got you. What up, everybody? What's up, fam, man? Y'all are here with your boy, Mr. Music, a.k.a. The Boss. Listen, if you have not, man, definitely go check out my music school. I have a school uh, located in the Soto area called Mr. Music School of Music. Check that out, mrmusic.com. I also have a party band um, from the DFW area, Soulful Sounds Party Band. If you have not, look that up, man. Go follow us on all social media platforms. did it. I finally finished my first ebook, From Overlooked to Overbook, The Blueprint to a Successful Career as a Musician. Y'all, I poured my heart and soul over this ebook, compiling information from many years of experience that I feel would be beneficial to anybody who's looking to level up their career as a musician. I got so many topics on there, 10 different topics on there, talking about EPKs, professionalism, the gear to use. Go over to my link in bio, check out my ebook, follow me as I give more daily tips in regards to this topic to your future.
You don't have to be a Used to be my angel Then you switched Take a short pause for the calls. That was a lot. Y'all yeah. hit us with a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. I gotta say, man, it's been a, some great convo going on. It's, it's definitely one of the that, that's that's kind of you know we do we do a lot of well the majority of our episodes and posts, but I, that's why I like going live a lot of times, man, yeah. to have that uh, interaction. So yeah, that's dope. Yeah, now we've been talking about church hurt. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we good on that. Yeah, so. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, DFW Shed Sessions. Uh, you can also follow us on TikTok and Instagram under DF underscore Shed Sessions. And you can uh, follow us on Facebook, which you guys see now uh, under the, the DFW Shed Sessions FB page. Uh, all that good gravy. So, make sure you guys go do that and uh, you know, just keep doing what you do, show support, support, and all that. My my tongue twisting and twisting. So, uh, untwist your tongue. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. there we go. So, <laughs> let's get to these. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the social media plus. Professor Melwell, where can we find you on social media? Yes, you can find me on. I was about to start rapping. Uh, Nelly, you can <laughs> find me. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. TikTok and Instagram under Professor Mel Will. My uh, social is at the bottom of the screen. And yeah, that's it. Simple. Nice. So, uh, my good brother. What up, though? JL, where can we find you on social media? I uh, mean, um, you can find me pretty much everywhere. Uh, JL Groove, uh, Facebook, who is JL mm -hmm. Groove on Instagram. Um, TikTok as well. If you want to ride this funk train, go ahead and follow Funk Your Feelings on Facebook and Instagram. That's F U N K Y O Feelings. Also, if you want to uh, get some uh, merch, dabble in some of this funk couture, you can holler at us on there as well. <laughs> this funk couture, man. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know, I've definitely uh I've dived I've delved in, <laughs> into uh photography and videography and stuff like that. So you know, if you need some work done with that. Just hit me up, and of course, you know the re regular, regular stuff: yeah. Christian Mingle, X Hamster, Pornhub, mm. OnlyFans stuff like that's that. That's not regular stuff, but thank you. That's re that's regular. That's light stuff, man. Lou, well, we where can we find you, please? Street Baptist Church. We call us sin and sin. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you can't afford musicians. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, where can yeah. we find you? <laughs> All right, so you can find me on. Uh, Instagram and TikTok under Lou Paul Beats. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel. You can find me on Lou Paul Beats. Um, and also, uh, you can check out, check out my music I have uh, out on Spotify, Tidal, uh, YouTube, and uh, Apple Music, all that good stuff. Uh, if you would like to add some of my music t to your playlist, feel free. Uh, you can just pull it definitely, up under definitely got some dope uh, chill music. Uh, Lou Paul Beats. So, so yeah. Lou, you got your arms out tonight. I don't think I've seen right. you with yeah, your arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arms and knees. Elbows and knees yeah, out. Man, that's that's what's, what's about, man. Elbows just and just knees, being man. Sassy tonight. Yeah, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting the elbow knee trend. That's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what's, hey, man, before we continue, um, yeah. you know, excuse me, uh, especially since we're saying this, since we live, man, just um, uh, I did see earlier uh, it was posted that uh, – one of our young queens in the music uh dfw music uh mm -hmm. community uh she did lose her mom today I, oh. believe, yes. I believe to cancer so i just want to say uh shout out to uh manders uh manders uh, we praying for uh, you girl we, de we definitely praying for you um it's, it's going to be it's definitely going to be a rough patch especially when that shock wears off and mm -hmm. um so you know just try to just uh you know you know if you're listening to this just try to you know, get to a, get to a place to where you can, you know, find some type of, 
uh, you know, peace surrounded by the right people. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people in your face. There's going to be a lot of people you t- uh, people telling you this and that. Um, but uh, and, and a lot of people won't understand where you're coming from. They're going to act like they do, but they don't. Um, you know, just get get around the make sure you get around the right people. Um, and make and make just make sure you just try try to find some type of peace and comfort in the situation. So, um, so but but a uh, beautiful individual, talented individual. So yeah. so just uh, you know, even in the community, if you uh, you know, what I'm saying, if you can, uh, you know, show us some love or whatever, just you, you know, just let let her know she's not, she's not alone. So shout out the Manders, man. Yeah, cancer sucks. Yeah, we definitely praying for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We definitely praying for you, man. So, hey, I got a real quick question before we what's, what's before up? we get into it, man. I'm 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 starting to I'm starting to uh uh get into this thing to where like so every musician, regardless what you play, mm-hmm. you have your certain you you got certain like I guess you can call them like licks or just mm-hmm. certain things that you do. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's just like it, like if you a drummer you just get, you, everybody got that one go to lick or yeah. guitar you know y'all y'all got that one go to mm-hmm. lick or whatever right? Do you ever find yourself watching yourself play like on a playback video and you can kind of you can kind of predict oh I'm about to do that lick right here and go yep that, like did, did you, have you ever experienced that um, like where you can kind of predict what you're about to do while you're watching it? Mm, not not i don't watch my video because I, I record make videos every week uh-huh. so i don't i'm talking about like maybe like may, maybe it's a video of you like you want a gig or something like that and you kind of go back and watch it through like do you ever do that like go like find yourself knowing that you about to do something and then you do it uh not really yeah uh i think i'm kind of going you don't that. like the way you play or something I kind of well when I look right at myself now. and play I kind of critique myself in the way of of if I feel like if maybe you know what can I do to be better uh in in ways but I also don't mind myself letting it be out because it's it's like it's an own growing thing. So musicians if you watching the comments let me know if you ever uh gone through that man like you just watch yourself and you know and I don't know it's it's if, if I feel like if I can do like as far as me, mm-hmm. I feel like if I can do that, if I can get to a point to where I'm playing whatever, and I can just predict the lick that I'm about to do or whatever, yeah. I think is I think that means that it's probably like time for me to go back in the lab and like do some more. That's you know, a good point. Add a little bit more to my repertoire. Now, what 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 I will say is this: is that I do catch myself doing certain things, or I play like a lot of the same stuff where I'll be like, okay, I need to go. Because yeah. I feel like I find myself playing t- too much. Now I know that you catch your you you catch yourself doing this when you play for certain people for a long period of time mm-hmm. to where you predict you could do you, you y'all do certain things at the same time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It wasn't even rehearsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Yeah. But I'm I'm just more so talking about like you know, just individually. Like like I said, there's just certain licks that I'm finding my like I was watching um like like I said the front yard concert. Mm-hmm. I was watching um and now mind you the band that the band uh Ten and Tonic uh you know one one of the bands that I'm actually like uh consistently a part of. Been, yeah. Been I, I, we've been playing together. Uh, damn, they're going on like eight years, something like that, right? And it just be like, you know, what I'm saying, I'll see myself, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and watch, uh, you know, uh, watch a playback or whatever, mm-hmm. and I just, I just look, and because it's, it, I kind of put myself in the mind as if I'm, I'm there, yeah, I'm there, and I'm watching it, and it's like, okay, uh, I got this lick in my head, I'll probably do this right here, and then I'll do it in the video, mm-hmm. and, and so now that's kind of starting to make me feel like, okay. Am, uh, am I getting stagnant? Do I yeah. need to add to my like? Should it be a point? Should it be a point to where? Because of course now, now mind you, in most situations, it's not like we just remembered everything that we mm-hmm. played on that specific gig, right? Yeah. But it's just more so like it's getting to the point to where it's like, okay, I'm kind of doing that same lick in this same situation. Yeah. It's like I probably need to. You know what I'm saying? Go in the lab and like add to my repertoire a little bit and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh. No, I was about to say, so Jay, you said something on a previous episode about musicians having dialogue during playing or whatever. What do you mean? What do I mean? 
So like the dialogue doing playing. Like you mean like a talk back No, 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 not talk back. Like the music actually a conversation happening. Right? Okay. So Oh, comparing us yeah. playing to a co- okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like in general as a band, you know, a conversation happening or whatever while you're playing uh musically. Um I got, to, I got you, Ramon. To to your point, if you're in a convert, uh, well, you specifically, mm-hmm. you say this about preachers, you repeating yourself. You just said the same thing, mm-hmm. just in a different variation. You're yeah. repeating yourself. So, I know as a singer, there's times I'm like, stop doing that run. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you're doing, <laughs> you're doing that run on almost every part of the song, mm-hmm. and a pentatonic. I, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm <laughs> sick of hearing it. Uh, 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 like yeah. you're doing. So. From a musician's perspective, you guys are doing a lick consistently and like you get tired of it. Is that what you're saying? Like, oh, I'm sick of hearing myself doing this well, lick. So this is this is this is a personal thing for me as a musician that I'm I'm kinda like going back and forth with myself now. Um now you have some musicians where it's like, you know, kinda like Drew said, kinda like Drew said, he was like, I play the same thing every time, mm-hmm. right? And but it's like for me talking about myself, mm-hmm. talking about myself, I don't want to get to a point to where you like you know I'm I'm pretty much, uh, I'm I'm pretty much standard. Um, you know what I'm saying I have my I have my voice as a drummer. I have my style of playing as a drummer. But at the same time, you know, just when it comes to like overall ability, overall decision making, mm-hmm. stuff like that, you never want to get to a point to where you just become stagnant. Yeah. Right. Uh, I almost uh, like w- like one of the things I pride myself on is being being well versed in music and being able to play all genres across the board. Mm-hmm. I can do that and I can make um, each genre feel how they're su- each perspective genre feel how they're supposed to feel. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So I pride myself on that, but I still don't want to get so stagnant to where I'm I'm becoming predictable, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And then you when people hire saying? y'all, they that's that's the thing that they think about, right? Is uh, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, right? In some, in, well, not all the time because in, in some situations, and, and mind you, I'm not talking about licks to where I'm just uh, we playing like a, a slow blue, a uh, slow one four five blues, and I'm just doing all these crazy licks over that. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm talking about just you know just different feels, just you know here and there, you know. Oh yeah, uh-huh. whatever, right? Um. Now, uh, now, when it comes to some people, when it comes to some people, like you know, they like some people like predictable. Mm-hmm. Some people, some people like okay, I, I know. It's boring though sometimes. I mean, you know, and so that's but so that's what I'm saying. This is more so a personal thing mm-hmm. for me. You know what I'm saying? Some people like predictable. Some you know because maybe predictable to some people is dependable. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that I know that when I hire this particular musician, this is I know exactly what I'm gonna get when I'm gonna get it. They're not gonna do too much. They're not gonna do too little. You know, this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying for me personally, you know, things that I battle with. You know, just just making sure that I'm not stagnant. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Or I, me personally, I don't. For me, I don't want to be predictable. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to get to a point to where somebody's watching me and they be like, "Oh, he about to do that lick and go." And then no, I do that lick. That's yeah. a good I, perspective. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. He said, "But it's you, fam. The lick came from uh, your brain the first time. It's the same brain ref- ref- uh, re-listening to it. It's not predicting. It's remembering." Mm, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. a, that's a decent perspective. Yeah, he said decent. No, nah, I mean, you know, it's it's not a it's not a bad perspective, but it's it's a, you know, what I'm saying. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, Dwayne keeps stealing my licks, so it's like, I'm just <laughs> trying to, you know, Gummy keeps stealing my licks. So. Yeah, so so far as for for me, <laughs> like, uh, I, I, I don't I want to have something else so he can have those old <laughs> licks while I get new ones. Yeah, <laughs> far far as for me as a like a keyboard player, when you talking about licks, I think one of the things that I try to do to keep myself fresh is. I always find people or try to always find different people that I may not heard about mm, and start okay. listening to them. Like, uh, like still to this day, I still listen to like Corey Henry of and course. then, mm-hmm. uh, Cornell Gaskin is also, uh, just a crazy monster on keys. 
And every time I hear him play, it's like it's never anything the same ever. Now, now you know, even when he plays songs, they're, they're never the same one. Now you know. Now for me, you know, somebody who's, you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know your perspective on it, but somebody who. They're predictable, but they're a good predictable. Mm-hmm. Like something like I'm, I'm comfortable with knowing that they're gonna do that, but it's still like it's kind of like it's it's so like the things that they do and where they go is so dominant. They it's kind of like they do that every time. Mm-hmm. PJ Morton, mm-hmm. yeah, like he's he's PJ Morton is another beast, man. I mean, yeah. and, but that's he's, what I'm saying. I'm comfortable yeah. with I'm comfortable with it, but yeah, it's like it's, it's it's almost gotten to the point. To where you know he's he, oh, okay, so he's gonna do that diminish right mm-hmm. here. Like he's gonna do that. Yeah, you his, know what I'm saying. His plan is so tasteful, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and, 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 and smooth and crisp. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. and and I, I don't don't take anything away from, him, but yeah. it's getting to a point to where like when he does a song, you kind of know that he's gonna go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. you kind of know it now. Yeah. You know. Now you know, uh, this project that Ty Tribbett came out with, mm-hmm. so. When he did all all things new, the CD, mm-hmm. and then he came and did the or the Orlando live version. Mm-hmm. You literally, and that's something like I follow uh, Thaddeus, right? I I, I follow I follow Spank. Same monster. Same. Yeah, and Ooh. so right. if you listen to uh. The album version mm-hmm. of All Things New versus the Orlando version of All Things New, you you get the same feels but magnified. I, I, well, I, I think well that's how that's how it should be. you you know what I'm saying? Like I, and 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 so I should always get. I feel like I should always get more out of a live experience. Yeah. So, but what I'm saying is taking that same unless, unless your album is live, right? Yeah. So taking that same. Um, thing that you created that you play at different sectors and different venues the same music but then taking it to a live venue and doing the same thing but magnifying mm-hmm. I, I don't you know like well, but that's two, we're talking about two different things though no well i know you're saying like you know looking at what you've done and then you know knowing what lick you're gonna do but i'm saying from a perspective of being able to do that like like both say it's your music, so you created it. You know you're remembering it, but then also taking that what you remembered. Okay, I know I'm gonna do this in this spot, but what can I do to magnify what I did in this spot so it gives a greater feel or a different feel? Well, that's the that's the conundrum. Making sure I get in the lab in order to not make it redundant and make it feel feel as good, but right. not be predictable. Mm-hmm. That's. <laughs> but magnify. <laughs> Bo, leave me alone. You, you, you did kind of put a lot of emphasis him. on magnify. I'm because that's how I feel about but, the, um, the project. Hey, so I'm gonna say this real quick, and then we are gonna move on, man. Uh, for those of y'all, uh, for those of y'all, if you just now tuning in, man. Um, first of all, we appreciate you so much for checking <laughs> us out. We sometimes we I do. Sometimes too. I do both. We appreciate you for uh, checking us out. Also, uh, thank you. She really do. She really do. Like they don't be know. hearing me. Uh, <laughs> we do actually. Our our headphones are turned up quite. But anyway, um, yeah. So we appreciate y'all for. But uh, we over like yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, so make sure uh, interact with us, man. Talk to us definitely. Uh, if you see Jason Dove, he has no problem with doing it. So just uh, just do the light version of what he's doing. Just uh, comment with us. Talk to us for a little bit. Uh, while we chopping it up and bringing it up these uh, uh, these topics, also yeah. make sure you share the live. You know, tell somebody. You know, go ahead whatever. And share. Hit that share also, button. go back and watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go, you know, if if you missed the, you uh, might have missed some. If you missed the beginning of uh, again, like I said, uh, don't have many adults on this panel. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, if you can get past the immaturity, then mm-hmm. then you know, just stick around and check us out. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. The adult in me saying, "Let's get into these segments." And that's exactly. Let's what, go and get see, into these segments. That's exactly what Bo was talking mm-hmm. about. Just to- yeah. So, usually, my my good brother over here, we start we starts off with the top five. Usually, my good brother J L Groove uh-huh. set up the segments, but I told him I want to do the top five tonight. He yelled at me. Yeah. Yeah. So, J L. <laughs> yes, sir. What 
are your top five bands. And I'm 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 gonna say this: your top five bands that it was a, it was the type of band that you know is gonna be killing. And and if they was in town, you was gonna go see them. Or when you heard they when you heard they had the album out, and you know the band was playing, you already know it's gonna be smacking. Okay, so let's let's set some boundaries. Uh huh. Are we uh are we talking about local bands? Are we talking about um are we talking about like like live acts? Or are we talk like what what kind of I'm band talking, are about we like, talking about like like live act, like it could be both. It could be a live act or a band that that back mm-hmm. uh artists or mm-hmm. uh, in that in that. I got sense. you. So my favorite band, my top five favorite bands. Okay, so you got um you got uh Corey Henry and the Funk Apostles, and okay. this is not in any order. Okay. Um, you got Corey Henry in the Funk Apostles, uh, Snarky Puppy. Okay. Um, now, uh, while they didn't, uh, well, I mean, they they still did live, but I'm talking about, uh, if we're talking about backing, like a backing band, especially mm-hmm. when, if you're talking about like a. Get your brother. <laughs> it's a rerun. <laughs> if we're, if These we're ta- are recurring segments, both. If, if we're talking about um, uh, stuff. <laughs> Stuff like that, my personal opinion, the all-time greatest mm-hmm. recording band was the Funk Brothers. Okay. And that's the band who built, who was the band behind the Motown sound. Oh, okay. Every, yeah, every, yeah. every Motown, you know, every old school Motown act that you heard, like, you know, Temptations, Marvin, all of mm-hmm. them, you know what I'm saying? The band I was playing behind them was called the Funk Brothers. And... Pro- greatest recording band of all time. To me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So uh, you have them. Um, man, um, I have a few. Man, that's a um, Anderson Pack. Okay, Anderson Pack. His, yeah. his band. His band is super dope. Uh, his band is uh, uh, the Free Nationals. Mm-hmm. That's my, uh, Anderson Pack. Oh man, cause cause I I got a I got a I got a one A and one B. Mm-hmm. Both said scruff. Um, I didn't. Um, a one A and one B. Uh, can I do? Can I do that? Will you? Yeah, will it, you allow have me it, to have a one one it, A and one B? Have you? Um. So, uh, uh, you got Thundercat. Mm-hmm. His band and. Um. Okay, so um, I I don't I don't know the name of the band, and I've never seen them live. Mm-hmm. But I would love to. I would I would absolutely love to see them live. Um, is um, I well the MD his name is uh Von Concepts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I forget, but like he's been the backing band for like Tank. Uh, he's been the backing band for uh I got I got to look up the name, but I know the MD his name is Von Concepts. Okay, and um like his uh his band. Uh, like especially when it comes to arrangement. Ah, I forgot about them too. Well, but I'll leave it at this. Uh, especially when it comes to like arrangements mm-hmm. and uh, how like how clean their hits are, how clean their transitions are. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta I gotta uh, go look for the band. But um, like I said, MD, his name is Von Concepts and his band. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen them live, but I would love to see them live. Hey, but, yeah. Kiana. Okay. Hey, nice. sis. Um, Keanu, what up? Yo, uh, I don't have a top five, but I will give an honorable mention to mm-hmm. uh, the band that Jumpy Key be putting together when he mm-hmm. does his live shows. Oh, yeah. Any band that's going to be playing with Jumpy Key. Yes. Be yeah. Like, for real. And y'all musicians don't act like y'all didn't practice God of Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rain um, on us. Uh, um, the, the, the name of the band is called Band MVP. Or, oh, the, okay. or the MVP band. Okay. That's uh yeah, it's called the MVP band. Yo, like if you if you uh go on uh, yeah. Instagram and stuff, check out MVP band. Mm-hmm. And like I said, M D his name is Von Concepts. Like I said, one of the dope some of the dopest arrangements, some of the like the cleanest hits and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they go in. So that's a live band I really love. Okay. You don't have a top five professor male? Well see, mine's mine's are not uh like specific bands. I have like live recordings that I live recordings. Yeah. Okay. Who? Well, who are your top five live recordings? Um, 
not in any particular order. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say mint condition, uh, Patrick. Okay. He said, "Dang, no mint condition." Man, uh, well, so that, that's. Come on, man! I only get five. He only yeah. well, you gave more than five, but I get I I those were like split mm-hmm. in half. <laughs> A and B's. Yeah. Uh, I mint condition is on my list, Pat, mm-hmm. and that's because I went to see them in live. Pat, yeah. being, Pat being a deal though, though. Now nah, the hands gonna be there, brother. Um, the hands are gonna be there. Um. Pat, what's your top five? While while Professor Mel doing her, what's your what's your top five live bands? Yeah. So um. So me. So 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 I'm I I kind of have an old soul, and I am a church girl. So I gotta go with. Uh, I feel like y'all gonna crack on me when I say this, but I gotta go with besides Jump and Kick Van and Mint Condition. I have to go with uh Vanessa Bell. If you listen to her Desires of My Heart CD, now uh the gospel scene now the musicians. Oh, y'all gonna get me. Mm-hmm. But y'all ain't got nothing on the older albums. Mm-hmm. And the reason big the reason I'm saying that is because these people who recorded live um albums back then, they didn't have all the mechanism me- mechanic mechanisms. Sure. <laughs> That's my word. They didn't have all the mechanics. It's, it's up there with butamus. And all <laughs> and all the software that you guys have. Y'all have click tracks and 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 and, and, and winds and chimes and <laughs> all that. When you take these these uh live recordings from back then, I was listening to Marvin Sapp's uh Perfected Praise uh Cities and Vanessa Bell. Those bands, those transitions. Mm-hmm. Shut up, Bo. You <laughs> talking about sounding out, man. You know I can't talk. Uh, those, so, I mean, they literally take all my top. And that's because I I literally, I fell, I fell in love. And you can thank my dad because he played um, vinyl records with DJ Rogers and Timothy Wright and all those type of people. So I literally have a also when it comes to gospel music. No. and. Now, if if you're talking about live recordings, I am utterly shocked. I'm just as shocked as Pat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just about as, to block you, sir. <laughs> I'm just, like you know, Pat said with me about men condition. I'm just as shocked that if you're talking about live recordings, you didn't say out the box. I was getting to that oh. because oh, yeah, out yeah. the box is my favorite, one of my favorite live shows, and it and you you take music production Mm -hmm. dancing audience participation um ministry all of like literally tony was in his bag with that whole production and and no i don't think he gets enough um flowers for what he's contributed but uh yeah i mean and then of course some of the stuff that jay has said i've seen some of those bands uh in person i will say Sopranos. That's a uh, that, Drew. That's a solid list. That's Corey a solid Henry. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Drew's list is Corey Henry and the Funk Apostles, Snarky Puppy, Funky Knuckles. I was gonna say Funky Knuckles and Jump Peaky Band. I said that in any Thai tribute band. Yes, cause y'all y'all mm-hmm. musicians y'all studied mm-hmm. <laughs> those live uh those live albums and those live musics from those artists. Was that was that your five? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What well, about, what about you? What's your What's your top five live bands that you want to see? Okay, so my top five. I'm gonna start with Soundcheck, Ty Tribbett. Okay. Soundcheck, which was they was probably could have completely changed the game for like, sure. as far as I mean, totally gospel music, and I mean, <laughs> gospel music has gone too far. No. Uh, so yeah, Ty Tribbett, Soundcheck, uh, Ghost Note. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Ghost yeah. Note. Ghost That's Note. Band. Ghost Note. Uh, of yeah, course, uh, well, Snarky. And, and I seen them live too. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> you talking about? Funk, they did a they did a pop up show last year at uh, Three Links. Three Links. Okay, I was there. Oh, was you? Yeah. Okay. I, I went. Know, I don't know how I didn't see you, but I be in uh, the cut, man. Yeah. So 
so they did a pop up show. First, I I thought that, I like are they not coming because they came so late and it was like I, I'm like I'm trying to get home. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> so I decided I st- stuck around. And then when I saw Sput, I was like okay, yeah, they're here. Yeah. So I'm glad I stayed because it was well worth it. So, uh, Ghost Note, uh, of course, Snarky Puppy, um, uh, who else? Oh, Mint Condition, mm-hmm. and. Who else? I got one more. Okay, so I'm probably going to do an A and B like you did. Okay. So I will say jumpy, really any jumpy key band, but today's jumpy key band mm-hmm. and James Brown band. Ah, mm. okay. So, so yeah, that's that's going to be my top five. Who I is Gospel you. Power Line? Is, he be, he is, being a, is that a... He, he being a ding a <laughs> is what he being... <laughs> Is that a real thing, uh, Bo? It's probably one of them, one of them old quartet groups. <laughs> he said Sopranos. <clears throat> That's what's up, man. All right, man. So we're going to keep going with these recurring segments, man. Um, uh, so the next one is called, we call it Playing in the Wrong Key. This is our version of what uh, what grinds your gears. This, this is your pet peeve as a musician or artist. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it back at you, Lou. What's your, um, uh, what, what's, a, uh, what's playing in the wrong key for you? Playing in the wrong key. Let me see. Playing in the wrong key. My mind is blank right now. But I will say playing in the wrong key. I already said loud drummers. Um, a singer. Loose here. Huh? <laughs> now nah, nah, let it catch hold. <laughs> Uh, it's changing some may probably change the song at the last minute or changing the key mm-hmm. of a song at the last minute. Yeah, what's considered probably. the last minute? Cause listen, maybe they had they don't got no throw lozenges and they need that key lowered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, uh, Ramon, that's a good one. Uh, especially you telling him how to pat. Man, how to pat. Oh, man, listen, I, I take I take bombs back. My oh, pet, my pet, no, 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 no. My pet peeve is playing at church and somebody wants to shake my hand. Yo, while I'm why playing. you playing? Like, oh yo, I see that a lot. Oh my god, I, I be like, cringing. Oh, that, listen, <laughs> I like you. Not see me playing. Do you right not now? see my effing <laughs> hands moving, bro? I'm and I'm using both of my and we'll sit there. Yeah, and, and hold waiting, hand waiting, out, <laughs> waiting patiently. It's like, bro. Oh yeah, that's a. Oh, yeah, that's tell a, me how to play. That's another one. My blood pressure. My, my blood pressure. That's an, yeah, up. yeah. That's but another now, one. But now, uh, Ramon, that's a good. It's man, especially. Uh, uh, just to piggyback off his, especially when they don't know how to play the instrument that you're playing. Oh my God! Like they have, they have be that one, that one person sitting next, next to Ben, not a musician, but they want to guide you, tell you where to go have, through, they during have the absolute, service. They have, they, and like they don't, they really don't even have the have a clue on even how to instruct you because you, you yeah. might you might be playing for an artist that wants a certain sound or wants yeah. you to do a certain <laughs> thing, but it's like, bro. Uh, but but it's like, bro, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at Jason. But it, but it's like, bro, like like like, chill out with your critique mm-hmm. if you can't properly explain what it is that yeah. you want. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, yeah, that that's a that's a good one. Bo, I said that because I knew it was gonna piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I want to push some, the key, I want to push some buttons tonight." I said, "Take it to the two right there." Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My uh, my my pet peeve is. Is we're when, playing, playing when, in the wrong key. Get it, get get the segment right. It's called um, playing in the wrong key. My my playing in the wrong key. Shit. It's easy. I know you can do it. <laughs> is when the musicians. Oh, that's a good one, bro. Is when here's what I'm about to say. It's easy. I know. Yes, yes, and and I I have been guilty of doing that to musicians. Right, it's easy, easy. Come do it. Somebody yeah. tell you. Somebody yeah, tell you. Yeah, you know they the be like, song. all you got to do is do it, and they say dun dun dun. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, you're hearing something, but you, it's totally different when you play. It. Like, uh, I think I think Drew is the one that broke me up from that. Like. I, I I used to be that person, so I apologize. My plan not playing in the wrong key is when the musicians, especially in their talk, like it's a talk back mic <laughs> for a reason. But when you're louder than who is on the mic singing yeah. or ministering or whatever, I 
I hate that. Like it is such a distraction when there's so much going on yeah. in the music area or the music session, the musician session, and y'all got talk bass and y'all still loud. Nah, nah, bro, nah, bro. If if as a as a music director, if I say that's how we, if it's easy, then that means it's easy. Play it. <laughs> So yeah, I, I I hate that. I hate that. I I literally will sit there and be like, "You done?" Like it, it's 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 very very distracting when musicians got those talk back mics and they just take it too far and you can still hear them uh, over the music over the person who's on the mic doing the singing or talking. It's another thing yeah. I want to say. Just because I've heard the song before does not mean that I know the song. <laughs> <laughs> My brother used to do that. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you know this song. Yeah, I mean, I, man, hearing, I, it and, and hearing it and playing it is totally different, <laughs> man. You gonna figure out how how bad this song gonna sound because I'm gonna be playing the wrong chords because cause, because, <laughs> ne, ne, cause never too much be tearing y'all up. <laughs> that 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 man, never too much stay tearing y'all up, man. Um, so for me, my mine's a little bit different. It's definitely playing playing in the wrong key. I. I I it really irritates me with improper tip jar placement. Hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, like it, where they put where it, they put Im- improper that? tip jar placement. If you're in a situation where you're playing with a band and y'all have and y'all have a tip jar, put it to where the people can see it. Yeah. Put it to where the people can see it, bro. It's like I I play with like even as a recent I play with bands. They put it like off to the side of the stage, behind the speaker, like behind some. It was it was this uh it was this one band. It was it was this one band. Um, uh, well it's 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 innocent. It's innocent. Shout out to our good brother. Uh, as a matter of fact, he'll be on the show in a couple weeks. Uh, shout out to our good brother, um, Donald Johnson. He had a band uh called uh. Well, he had a party band. I forget the name of the band, but he had a party band, mm-hmm. and, they, and they they came uh, uh, they came to the venue uh, loose and low, and <laughs> and uh, you know what I'm saying. So if anybody know know been there and know how to know that setup is, you know you have the stage, and then there at the side there was this couch, and then there's a table right there, and then you know on the weekend. Um, you know, on the weekend, you know, it, it would get packed in there, man. Yeah. So you'll have all these people. They will put their tip jar on. And mind you, it's this little small black mm-hmm. box that yeah. they had as a tip jar. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to talk to him about it <laughs> when he get on the show. Well, they, they had this little small little tip jar, and they will put it off to the side over there by the chair. The band is right here. Mm-hmm. It's crowded. People sur- who Who's going to see your tip jar, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Pat said when the keyboard players start, he talking about you, Lou. When the keyboard players I know, I'm guilty. Song, I'm guilty. No, I do it. I no, do it. When the keyboard well. player starts to sound too fast, and then he look at me like it's man, my But I don't look at the drum, though. I, I, I know sometimes when I start stuff too fast, but I don't look at the drum when, like it's man, no Man, period. When, period, as a as a drummer, like just when, it, when a lot of times, I, I would rather tell the people, uh, that I'm playing for now. You, uh, oh, you want to count it off? Now you can start it. Mm-hmm. Let, let let me know where you want this at, and then I'm gonna go with you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm gonna go with you. But just know, uh, just know, I'm a really good, I'm a really good timekeeper. You Bo's, know what I'm saying? Bo said his playing in the wrong key is when musicians play loud while he giving the audience the rundown about tips and money. Yeah, and where to send it and all yeah, of that, and like, they playing too loud. It's like mm-hmm. it's like back up, give me some. I mean, or just period, or just period when you tell the band the breakdown. And I've I've seen I've actually seen this with Bo and his band. Like like yo, bro. Like even when it's a moment to where you're trying to say something. You saying something important, and you tell the band to break down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and then you still got that one person that feel like they gotta play <laughs> play on top. Oh, of it's what my you time said. to shine. Is it, is it normally <laughs> is it normally keys or drums or goddamn keyboard player? <laughs> <laughs> Every time it's the, it's the key it's the keyboard player, man. Hey, yeah. hey man, we gotta, we gotta we gotta have our time to shine, man. Yeah, that ain't yeah. it, brother. That, <laughs> that, ain't, ain't that, it. that ain't that ain't your time to shine. But yeah, man. So yeah, improper tip jar placement, man. That's that's my. That's playing in the wrong key for me, man. Put the tip jar. If you're going to have a tip jar, put it out there to where the people can actually see it and get to yep. it. And don't, you know, don't just have it hiding behind somewhere. So, yeah, that's mine. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Well. All right, man. So this this time uh, for the juicy juices. Yeah, man. Uh, last recurring segment, man. This one is called Geek Tales, man. And uh, you know, we can do this all day. We have oh, thousands man. of we have thousands of gig store. I, I I already got one. I already got one in the chamber, man. Mm-hmm. So uh, so yeah. You want to go? I guess I'll go first. Rock, paper, scissors, or who go first? Okay, ready? Red, it's going to be rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Ready? And go. Rock. I definitely oh. said rock, paper, scissors. See, you don't listen. It's the damn keyboard players. <laughs> <laughs> it be these keyboard players that I'll don't listen. You, I'll I'll I said one. rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Now, we're going to do this again. Okay. We're going to do it till we get it right. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah, right, you won. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. What we doing? Yo, that's why you playing. That's that's like you like you gonna bring me my bacon now and bring my grits thirty minutes later. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I right, it's on you. you okay. Going. <laughs> All right. So this is another story with Gump. <laughs> Gump, so hurry this up, is, get on this show, man. So this you, is <laughs> so you can defend yourself, brother. Right. <laughs> this is not a gig, but it's worthy of a I funny story. So, so me and Gump was chilling. It was at my crib, and uh, we went down to this corner store uh, to get some snacks, drinks, whatever. So, uh, well, he went to get something. I just took him to the store. So we at the store, what corner store? And this is like a just a regular school day. So I pull up at the store and it's a bunch of uh middle school kids hanging chill. I think it was I wanna say it may have been right after school or lunchtime, one of those. So kids out hanging and chilling and I look over, it's this black lady. She look like she's sixties plus. And when I look over at her, she's having a conversation with i guess herself but it like it was a serious deep <laughs> okay. conversation so i'm like okay i'm just let that be so i looked off now I look over again about two three seconds later she starts twerking <laughs> all right so i look off again so by this time gump is getting back in the car and so I got to tell you, this lady is like wearing a, a dress. I look over again. This lady did a cartwheel. Her dress came up and she has on no underwear. Jesus Christ. And me and Gump, we're like. Yeah, this, ain't yeah. same, this ain't the same lady that said, I'll give your fat ass a ride. No. <laughs> <ain't the> <laughs> I'm just thinking that. <laughs> Completely <laughs> different person. Oh, geez. And that was our day. So, yeah. So you had you got a free show. Oh man, a, a show that I did not ask for. <laughs> Was she at least nice looking? Mm. No. Mm. No. Oh, that's Sorry crazy. Damn, my stomach hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta take another break. You need yeah. some eye drops, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Some Canada dry or something. All right, <laughs> man, I right, so was that that was yours? Yeah. All right, man. So mine. Uh, so th- this uh this is a. A uh, story. Uh, this happened in my early days of playing with Tin and Tonic. Uh, Tim and Travis. That's another good brother of mine that we need to get on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but this was kind of like in the early, early days. Like you know, I, I, we've been the band for a little bit, but it was still kind of early for me. Um, so, and and I would say this. You know, just me being a little bit naive. The names, the names of the events and venues should have told me everything that I needed to know. Mm-hmm. However, I just, you know, again, me being naive, I just should have looked, you know what I'm saying, right past that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lou should be a songwriter because why he tell us about the key? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So so uh, we have to play this festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, the festival is called Raz on the Brass, and it's in this part of town called Hillbilly Haven. Okay. All right. So, and if you ever seen Tin and Tonic, uh, Tin and Tonic, we're more of like a, 
uh, you know, like a mixture of like, uh, and he has a he has a phrase for it. But I'll let him say it because I, I mess it up every time. But it's, it's like a mixture of um, uh, rock, blues, country, psychedelic, you know, like heavy country feel and a lot of tunes and stuff like that. But anyway, so um, the festival is called Raz on the Brass in this part of town called Hillbilly Haven. So uh, the bass player Jamie Vahala, I, I decided to ride with him. Mm-hmm. Now you know, in Tennantonic, of course, I'm, I'm known. It's four of us. I'm the only black dude. So we, and it's about like an hour and a half, two hours away. We go drive out there to the middle of nowhere. We, I mean, I mean, it's really at this point where I'm the only nigga within a twenty mile radius. Yeah. Right. So three camels. In the we pull out. We pull up. <laughs> we pull up to. We, we we pull up to where I guess um uh I guess the check in or whatever, right? Jamie and I and Tim Tim Man and them, they're already mm-hmm. there. We pull up we pull up now in, in Jamie's car, he got his uh bass guitar, his amp, I got my drums in the yeah. back, his windows are not tinted, you can see this, whatever. So uh the it's this it's this old skinny White dude, barefoot with overalls on, long mm-hmm. beard, stuff like that. And um, so Jamie, Jamie's driving. Dude walks up to the car, and Jamie's like, "Uh, yeah, uh, we're in Tennantonic. We're here for the, uh, we're we're in the band, uh, uh, playing for the festival." Dude looks at Jamie, looks at me. He looks back at Jamie. He in the band too. I just put my head down because I, re- I, re- I I'm, I'm just shaking my head, and Jamie's looking at him like, "Where you come from, boy?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he's in the band. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then, mm-hmm. so then he he pauses, looks at us. Y'all hold on. Go. Oh man, it's your fault. Goes goes back to the table. Goes back to the table to get uh, our passes. Mm-hmm. Our passes. He hands Jamie his and just. Toss me mine. Oh what? man, y'all going on? I said, I said, what Jamie. I said, Jamie, look. As soon as Ten say thank you, good night, we gotta go. Jamie thought Jamie did. It still hadn't clicked in him mm-hmm. what was going on. I said, yo, soon, soon as we, soon as we play, bro, we gotta go. And then, like I said, and when I say the town is called Hill Billy Haven, oh yeah, is and it ain't it ain't nothing out there. Signal trash. Lake over here, this is that and the other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like plantation. Everybody basically. everybody in overalls and, you know, straw hats and shit. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah, it's time. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's, so yeah, type yeah, that's yeah. pretty much like, you know what I'm saying? So we go we go play the gig, but this was uh nothing happened after that, but this was the cool part. I told Tim Man what happened. He said, We'll never play here again. Mm-hmm. Never played there again. So you you, you know what I'm saying? Of a, a band where the leader actually keeps his word. Oh man, listen. I, I mean, there was there was another story, uh, another story with that uh, playing with Ten and Tonic. Man, uh, we went to the, in Dallas. It was this biker bar. Mm-hmm. It was this biker bar. Um, and whatever movie that you seen where it's like all these a shitload of bikes and all these bikes with the yeah. with the cuts and stuff like that, and everybody all rugged and rough. This was that bar, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It, like e- even the women got their sleeves rolled up with tattoos, flexing. <laughs> yeah. Like whatever you seen Sons in those, mo- yeah, whatever you seen in that in, in those biker movies, mm-hmm. this was that bar. Uh, I get there a little bit early, walk in. One of the first thing, one of the first things I see is a Confederate flag. I'm like, I don't think I can do it, bro. Mm-hmm. Ten man pull up right after me. I said, "Hey, Tim, you know I love you, bro, but I ain't gonna be able to." Ten man said, "Hold on." He walks over to the bar. I don't know what he said to him, but he said something. Ten man walking back over me, wanted bartenders go. He take the Confederate flag down. Ten mm-hmm. man, yo, let's do this gig. We're never playing here again. Mm-hmm. We did that gig. Never played there again. You know what I'm saying? Tim Man, there was another situation. Uh, We was at a gig. Uh, Dude. uh, How long you been playing with uh, uh, Tim Man? About eight years now. Eight years. That's that's family to me, man. Yeah. That's that's, that's diehard family to me, man. And these stories are Mm -hmm. part of why, you know what I'm saying? Somebody like him. Uh, Man, uh, another situation. And I technically, this is three gig tales, but it's all the same thing with the same person. Yeah. Another situation. Uh, after a gig, we at this bar. We you know packing up, loading up. Uh, dude 
dude got a little too drunk. It was mm-hmm. some like Indian Arabian dude or whatever. And I pull up to the front door to start loading up my stuff, and he's he's standing there. He kind of drunk, and he's just looking at me r- weird. I was like, I was like, hey, bro, you good? Are you okay? You need to like whatever. Yeah. And he was like, are you good? Are you okay? I'm like, all right, bro, don't don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? He and and he and so when I did when I did that, I said, don't worry about it. He was like, what? You're gonna shoot me? What? I was like, <laughs> just random. I was, yeah. like, I was like, hey, all right, so go ahead and load my stuff in. I go back in the bar. I like, hey, Tim, I'm about to go ahead and dip, bro. He was like, Tim was like, what's wrong? He was like, I told him what happened. And apparently, Tim Man had had some words with this same dude earlier mm-hmm. in the night. So I told him what happened and who it was. He was like, that same guy? And and Tim Man, like, you know, we don't, re- we don't really do it now, but, uh, you know, at – uh, we would do like an after gig shot, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. He had, he had our after gig shots, and Tim Man smiled, took his shot. Uh, shout out to Amy, that's his wife. He said, "Baby, I'm going to jail." Mm-hmm. So Tim Man, <laughs> <laughs> baby, I'm going to jail. So Tim Man, Tim Man, step outside. Tim Man, and Tim Man has this walk where you know, yes. he, like when, whenever he's pissed, it's something yeah. and, he's, about to go and down. he's a giant. Yeah, you know I'm saying, mm-hmm. and yeah, mind you, Tim Man is like six three, six four. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying, like big dude. You know what I'm yeah. saying. He he not a you know what I'm saying. So you know, he he walks outside. He walks outside, and uh, I'm like, hold on, wait. So he get he get to the dude before me now. That, uh, uh, at the uh the bar we was at, we real cool with that place with mm-hmm. the staff and all that stuff. So while you know, before me and Tim get out there, uh shout out to the homie Chris who works at this spot. Chris is uh they done called the dude a Uber, the Uber pull up, but d- d- Chris is trying to get the dude in the Uber. Yeah. So Tim Man is standing like so it's the dude, excuse me, Tim Man, then me. Mm-hmm. Dude, dude hauls off, looks at me, and calls me the N-word. Oh, man. Tim Man reaches over Chris and slaps the shit out of dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, in my mind, in my mind, I'm like, brother, I love you, but that was mine. Yeah. <laughs> so we get Tim Man out the way. We get Tim Man out the way. I I tap Buddy on his shoulder, and he just he just took a nap real quick. And fell asleep in the car. You you tapped him. <laughs> tap buddy on the tap buddy on the shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, don't do that. And, and, he, <laughs> and, and then he just and, fell. And he just he fell in the car. And then the and then the Uber. So the Uber driver. Now did, what was funny is Uber driver just sitting in the car the whole time. He was kind of he's kind of like man, whatever's happening, you got this coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so then he just he just gets out the car, closes his door, and then they drive off. Mm. Mm. And he's a, this is a real story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. say, he said what he said, man. I said what I I, just, I tapped Buddy on the shoulder. He just he just decided to take a nap right then and there. Mm-hmm. I just but yeah, man. He said it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping pill, brother. Sleeping I was pill. Just, I just wanted clarity. In, in just... every single, but, but my point is, in, in in every single one of these situations, man, Tim, man, like, cause like I said, I our remember fans, a story about you, bro. Our, our fans, like, t- you know, we we love Tin and Tonic fans, but you know, our our fans, uh, you know, like I said, they love that, you know, they love that country, man. We even uh, <laughs> we even had a situation where like, uh, Tim man has a song called "The Truth," and it says Uncle Sam's lives got the man hating cigarettes. Hey, Tim, <laughs> boy. Hey, hey, speak of the devil, he would appear. Uh-huh. Speak of the devil, he would appear. But yeah, man, shout out to Tim Man Travis. Can't wait to get you on the show, brother. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we talk about you. But yeah, man, so um, uh, he got this song, beautiful. One, one of my all-time favorite songwriters mm-hmm. in Dallas. Uncle Sam's Lies Got the Man Hating Cigarettes. He's from another country. He must be a terrorist threat. Yeah. Um, it's just another lie that they use to try to make you forget your God-given truth. So what do I do, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody. <laughs> Good old man. <laughs> so in our tip jar, somebody like wrote on a napkin, don't be so political. You know what I'm saying? I say that to say like with our sound or whatever, you know, we like – as far as just the the sound, the sonics of Ten and Tonic, mm-hmm. a lot of like you know, you know, right wing, you know, hillbilly, you know, they gravitate to just how we sound. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so because of that, you know, you know that that attracts a certain not not everybody, but a lot of people that you know 
listen to you know ten listen to all, and it's, that's not necessarily our fault because we don't uh man we we preach love we preach um we preach love. My Tim Man got love songs for days. Mm. I love you know him. what I'm saying? Like uh, again, amazing songwriter. Yes. Like way yeah. way better than Bo Dub. His it's music like, sometimes <laughs> will put you in a trance. Man, listen, and that's that's like that's like that psychedelic feel, mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I man. can just so, stand there and just but, be swaying but from as side a, to side. Uh, um like I said, I don't use words like friend loosely. I don't use words like family loosely. And every time that we've been in that situation, man, Tim Man has always had my back. That's what's up. He man. has always yeah. Always had my back. He has forever had my back, and for like for that, I will forever have his man. So he said, uh, "How about the lady? How about that lady saying she couldn't believe I was blazing in a crowd with a bunch of rebel flag?" Yeah, we uh, we had a had a situation. Uh, I think it might have been like some more bikers or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you would bring uh, your kids to this. I feel I feel I feel like you might be talking about gas monkey. Uh, we had we had a gig at we, uh, the big on the big uh, uh, the big gas monkey stage back yeah. when we, that that concert we had a gig that we opened up for some mm-hmm. major band and uh, yeah uh, like I said a sea of people n- no less than a thousand people mm-hmm. no no less than like thousand probably fifteen you know it's one of the bigger biggest crowds I've played for uh, the Lax yeah that's what it was called we was opening up for them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I said, a bunch of bunch of that, but we did it. But you know, and to Tim Man's point, it's like, man, you you were first of all, this not the type of show where your kids should be at. For mm-hmm. one, two, it's a, it's a lot of cats with rebel flags and all this stuff going on, and you know what I'm saying, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, with all that stuff going on. So it's like, so it's like, yeah, man, you should really prioritize what mm-hmm. you bringing your kid around. Yeah. But yeah, man, Tim Man Travis has always had my back, man, and and yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my very long gig tales with the S. Cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cool. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, y'all, this has been a very great episode. It was a very man. great episode. From- hey, Lou, I know I've said this before, mm-hmm. but I really mean it this time. Mm-hmm. I think this the one. Oh, this the one. I think this the one. Okay. No this to no this to the other episodes, yeah. but I really mean it. I know I said I I meant it last time, but I really mean it this time. Okay. I think All this right. the one man. Well this was was definitely was a real good one. We had Mel just, just had us going in on, man, on church and, man, and, listen. and these these musicians and the and the saints. It was on my mm-hmm. heart. It was man, on your, listen. deeply on your heart. You had a lot let off your chest like I like did. like Jay had a lot let, let off his chest last time. Last week. time, man, right? Listen. <laughs> man, listen. I guess I gonna have to let something off next next one we we uh I tell uh, you another thing. Hey man, <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> we 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 definitely gonna be doing more live live situation, man. Cause yeah. we love interacting with y'all. We love, you know, what I'm saying that. And and again, man, appreciate you uh, to everybody uh, that you know that tuned in, watched us, uh, that has been supporting us, that yep. uh, continues to support us, man. We just, we really thank y'all so much. We really trying to make this train move, man. I've heard uh, I've heard you know a lot of good compliments just mm-hmm. on the show in general. Yep. Um, you know, you know, I had somebody telling me that, uh, you know, they really haven't seen, um, in, in as far as podcasts in mm-hmm. Dallas, yeah. you know, this, mm-hmm. um, I had a, t- a totally different person tell me, uh, you know, they appreciated like how we interact with each other and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And my main is my, my main thing is, man, I didn't even know you watched the show. Yeah. I didn't even know you watched the podcast. So we definitely got eyes on this man. And like I said, it's because y'all, y'all help us get the word out. Y'all like, share, y'all subscribe and stuff like that. And we just, man, we look forward to uh, greater things, man. Yeah, yeah. I got to say the group is definitely growing. Yeah. 8,000 8, plus. So I will say this because I I monitor um, the inbox for DFW Share Sessions. So I'm just going to say if you have a person or you yourself want to get on the podcast and, um, you know, be Appreciate interviewed that, or whatever, I just ask, one, that you are very thorough in whoever you're bringing to the table, even if it's yourself. And then, two, don't just say, hey, I got somebody. Like, drop us their socials. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Give us information about them. We're not going to just put somebody just – I don't care if we know you or not. And I'm the producer, so I can say it. I don't mm-hmm. care if we know you're not. You can't just say, hey, put this person on the show. We need to be able to vet them. We need to be able mm-hmm. to find out information. We do our research here. 
So, T Man, yeah. we got you, brother. You definitely T Man, T- <laughs> we brother, got you. You definitely brother, be on we the show. got you. You're definitely gonna be on. But yeah, just as a rule of thumb, we don't mind all. You know, mm-hmm. even if it's an upcoming musician that maybe people don't know much about, but he make a noise or she make a noise or whatever, we don't mind none of that. Just give us the information. Don't just say you know somebody. We don't care if you know somebody. Just give us the information so we can vet them. And um. Yeah, and mind and mind you, like you said, we're also we're also looking for all perspectives. <laughs> yeah, Drew, I don't care if you said or not. You <laughs> need to give if, if we're, socials. <laughs> we're, we're looking we're looking at all different uh, perspectives, man. Um, like we want educators, we mm-hmm. want. Uh, you might not even therapist, uh, whatever. Yeah. You might not even necessarily have to be in the music business, mm-hmm. but uh, we've had an entertainment. A and that would be interesting to get a and like an A and R man. A and R, A and R man. I want, I want, uh, I want a bar owner. I want a bar manager. I mm-hmm. want, a, I, I want a bartender. Mm-hmm. I would like to talk about their perspective and like you know working with these bands while they're behind the bar and you know the, you know this is that and the other um, vocalists. Uh, uh, you know, uh, like I said, voc- instructors mm-hmm. like lawyers. Um, Tambourine you know, player? No, I mean, no, they can stay with it. <laughs> no, they, 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 they can stay with it. Boy, you you just you do us so dirty. And, ten, and tam, we and we carry church service. Yeah. Washboard players. Yeah, y'all y'all carry it y'all carry it away to where it don't need to go. <laughs> <laughs> the one person I was doing them tambourine tricks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like it, I, I'll say that for my next uh, uh, playing in the wrong key. Tambourine players that throw off the tempo and they still look at the drummer. <laughs> You know Drummers that don't know how to get back to the one. Hey, that, uh. hey that's the, <laughs> not a problem. Uh. This irritates me too. That's a, that's a, that's definitely one. But yeah, man. But other than that, man, we got to go ahead and uh, we got to go ahead and wrap it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you guys for your support. Well, we appreciate y'all so right. much, man. This has been the this DF, fun. Yeah, yep. DFW shed sessions. Y'all, See you the y- next. Y'all got any last words? DFW shed sessions channel. All right, man. Peace. And remember. It ain't gonna suck itself. To God be the glory. I'll see y'all <laughs> Did later. Did this dude just say to God be the glory? I am done. Oh man.